you PG? No, no, you can take your cuss. No PG around here, motherfucker. <laughs> Um, What's up? This is the Six Pack Podcast. We're in here with uh, Eric Evans today, and he said he wanted Modelo's, so your boy came through with Modelo's. You got a 24 pack, and ain't nobody drinking over there, so there'll be some more if we, if we can make it through these six. Yeah. Cheers. Oh, cheers, 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 man. Cheers, man. Cheers. Yeah. I don't ever tap it, bro. You don't ever tap it? I don't know why. Yeah. I think I feel like it's a Mexican thing. I don't know, man. Bro, like. <laughs> It's a Mexican be, beer, so... I've been hanging around a whole bunch of Mexicans, bro, and they put me on Modelo, man. So, yeah. like, I love this shit, bro. Like, I love it. But. I was going to get limes and salt and everything, and then I was at the store, and I was like, I need a monster, and I forgot about everything else. Really? So. Yeah, man. Yeah. That was crazy. All right, man. Yeah, so we're on here, man. This is, a, this is the first time that we've actually hung out and had a real conversation. Exactly. We've, I was, we I met was, in passing, seen each other, bump fists. Seen this man, never said nothing to him. Thought he was just another one of the homies at the shows. So it's cool to be here on the podcast, man. So I appreciate you, bro. Yeah, man. I appreciate you coming. Uh, yeah, man. So let's just run it, man. Yeah. Uh, all right, man. So I gotta ask. What's up? So you got like the you got like the the different backgrounds going. Yeah. The UK stuff. And yeah, man. So how did how did all that come into play? Cause all right. I'm curious myself. Yeah. So like for me, bro. Like a lot of people ask, was I in the military and all that shit? I wasn't. Um, I'm not I'm not a military brat. Uh, I had an opportunity to live overseas, China yeah. and England. Um, and man, I was just able to soak up the different cultures, bro. And they yeah. come in here to Texas, man. It's different cultures within Texas. You know, you got Hispanic culture. Yeah. You got, it's crazy. Just Texas culture in general. So I'm, I mean, I'm just soaking up everything. Bro, yeah, for much. sure. Like, That's because I was, because I, I went on one of the song. He's like, Eric, I was over here. I'm from the UK. Yeah. And I was like, like, See, is he like from the UK? Nah, from the UK? Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> I just live there. See? And the thing is too, they used to make jokes about it. Niggas really used to think I was from the UK, bro. Like, they like, it hey, sounded bro. like it. So nah, nigga, I just I just lived there, but it was a cool experience. You know what I'm saying like yeah. I'm blessed, and man, that shit changed my life, bro. Like that's a cool thing too. Since I lived over there, like my goal, in like my big goal, man, is like to do shows over there. Yeah, you for know, sure. You, you can do it just the way you do shows here. You know, just go over there and do the same shit. Um, Maybe so, that's like a, like the metalcore scene. Like the metalcore scene here mm-hmm. in the United States is real chill. Mm-hmm. But when they do like the European tours, oh, yeah, they said they make bank to, to last them two or three years. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. they, it's something they're not exposed to. Mm-hmm. Like there's there's bands over there like that, but yeah. they want that American style mm-hmm. metalcore screamo stuff. Yeah. And, I mean, dude, I I had my moments when I was into it. Oh, in the mosh pit. Okay, yeah. Got yeah, knocked yeah. down. Got mm-hmm. picked up. All that. I've done all that. They, they love that shit over there. Bro. Yeah, they it's it's the, yeah, it's a whole nother level yeah. over there. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna get fucked up on these Modellos. <laughs> I love Modellos, man. Yeah, I, I know that you. I know you should put that on your little your Instagram note with Modelo yeah, time. I was like, man, oh, all right, all right. After a long day, you just want a Modelo, man. So yeah. What about you, man? Where you, where you from, man? Man, I'm Fort Worth, born and bred. Man, okay. I was born at JPS, the County okay. Hospital. Mm. Grew up in Eastside mm. at uh, Woodhaven Apartments off okay. of John T. White and Brentwood. There. All right. Went to a private school in Meadowbrook over there. Okay. Uh, when I was. High school is when I finally, I went to Southwest High School okay. over here in Southwest Fort Worth. Yeah. My, my parents moved over here. Mm. And I've been on this side of town ever since. Yeah. I swore up and down when I was in high school, man, yeah. fuck this side of town, bro. I'm moving. <laughs> I'm moving to Arlington. I'm moving to Saginaw. Know, I'm going to move to Burleson. I'm going to move somewhere. <laughs> like, I ain't trying to be around with all these people I went to high school with for the rest yeah. of my life. You ever been to Cleburne? Yeah, I've been out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, I want to buy a house. I might buy a house out there, bro. Yeah. It's racist as fuck, but like. <laughs> nah, bro. It's, it's cheap. It kinda, yeah, it kind of <laughs> is, bro. Like, Yo, rent be $700. Versus bro. living city limits over mm-hmm. here. It's a lot cheaper out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, man. So, okay, the project. Yeah. Is on February 4th. Drops. February 4th, the project's dropping strictly independent. Um, Man, that's just. This project is like growth for me, man. Like, if you followed me through all these years, you see the progression that I've from started 2000 and what 15 to where I'm at now. You see the progression. Um, strictly independent, man. That's just no. Getting, hold on, hold on. You only been rapping since 2015. I've been, man. I've been serious since 2015. But I've been, man. I've been making music since I was like 14. Bro. Okay, like, okay. I was always in band, bro. I used to play instruments. Like yeah. music's always been in my life. But like as far as me taking it serious, be like, you know, I want to make some money off this shit. Yeah. I want to impact people. Um, I'm gonna take it serious. I did it in 2015, and my mom always told me, man, she was like, "Cause I be doing hella shows, bro, for free." Yeah. And my mom one day she was like, "Yo, you need to stop doing shows for free. You really need to like get like take it serious, you know." And ever since yeah. then, bro, I started treating music like a business. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, for sure. I went to get my LLC. 
um, shit like that that you really need to do. Even if you just small time, you know, you need to get your shit straight now. So when you be big, yeah, you already got it in line. You know what I'm saying? Cause um, yeah. So this album, bro, is just giving free game um, to the young niggas. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Like I appreciate you, real shit, for having me on this podcast. Cause I didn't try to reach out to motherfuckers that do like podcasts and they be on some funny shit. No, nah, man, like, like, my, like, dude, my, mm-hmm. this is a small podcast, bro. But the thing man. is that I've realized I get a lot more views on reels on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Okay. I get a lot more views on reels on YouTube. Mm-hmm. And, like, podcast views, it used to be a big deal for me. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, how many people are watching? Yeah. How many people are watching? Mm-hmm. But when I can cut a reel on Instagram, mm-hmm. and I think a couple of dangs hit, like, 500 okay. on reels. And it's yeah. like, yeah, okay, well, that's 500 people somewhere mm-hmm. watching exactly. shit. Somebody so. Can. So yeah. that's fine with me. So my thing is, fuck all the gatekeepers that's doing the podcasts that don't, like, that's... <sighs> yeah, man. I just hate it, man. Like, yeah, so like I said, I appreciate you for having me, man, because I've been trying to reach out to some people, and I feel like I'm somebody in Fort Worth that's really been... Yeah. Like, I didn't really been... Like, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't put on for the city, and I ain't even, like, born here, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I rep the city everywhere I go around the states or whatever... I'm from Fort Worth, bro. You rap yeah. where you rap. I mean, you got a song called Two AM in Fort Worth. Exactly, because Fort Worth. Man, like how many how many people how many rappers yeah. from here can say that? And I talk about Juanitos in my songs. Yo, you ever been to Juanitos? Juanitos is the shit, bro. Yeah, <laughs> fuck that line though, <laughs> but it's good. But yeah, man. So yeah, the album's dropping. Um, just so it's like an EP or like a full album? It's a full album, bro. Full album? Like, yeah. Like, this, so this year, man, I'm trying to stay consistent with as many projects as I can. Yeah. I'm independent, bro. I you were killing that Sessions project. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, dude, I, that shit was badass. Me and Session, bro, like, we just link up and we just make magic, man. And, um, yeah. Like, with me and him, that's all organic. That's organic, yeah. like, chemistry. And that's like my brother, you know what I'm saying? Because, like, if my verse is trash, he's going to tell me. If his beat yeah. is whack, I'm going to tell him, your beat is whack, you need yeah. to change this. We need to change this, this, and that. Because a lot of people I worked with before, they don't want to be honest with them. Saying like, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. I've I've heard I've heard both ends of the spectrum yeah. from producers yeah. and dudes that'll like yeah. they try to get paid. Mm-hmm. A lot of the not just the producers, but the the engineer, the sound, everybody, and the, like it can be garbage, yeah, bro. Yeah, and yeah. some of them are just like, I need this paycheck, yeah, yeah. and. It ain't even always about the money, man. Well, but, I mean, I know it's not. And I'm not saying that all the engineers and producers that I know are like that. Mm-hmm. But I've heard dudes yeah. at album releases like, oh, man, I don't work with some of the worst artists in this area. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I still produce their yeah. music because they, they had the See, money. That's fucked. I don't know, man. <laughs> like, don't you got to pay bills, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's true, yeah. But, I mean, and, if, and like, there's, I mean, there is low-end production. Mm-hmm. There's low-end engineers yeah. that if you link up with and... Mm-hmm. So like so who who does all your mix and mastering? Your myself, ones. me, myself you do and it? I. Um, me, um, Fosepco, I'm gonna start going to him. Yeah. Uh, Chico, me and Carlos, we go to Chico whenever. I really like yeah. Chico a lot. Like he's probably one of my favorite. No, Chico's bad. Um, I was in. The, I was. I was with my buddy the other day, and he was mixing mm-hmm. a song. Okay, yeah. And Chico, Chico yeah, found yeah. the Chico found the hook. Yeah, like he yeah. found the hook in the verses. Yeah. He was like, "Nah, this is the hook, bro." Oh, yeah, yeah. It, nah, Chico's good, bro. Like, yeah. If you definitely trying to make your music to the next level, go to Chico. Go to Fosepco. Three fifty seven. I heard about three fifty seven. Yeah, I was with um, three fifty seven yesterday. Yeah, me, I, me. yeah. And it's funny, like I just met three fifty seven, and I've seen them on social media. And that's the thing, man. Yeah. Bro. The DFW scene, like you'll be friends on Facebook for years, and then you finally meet him out in public. So yeah, because that's how it was. Because uh, one of his artists, uh, Thresh Thilo, mm-hmm. he works with Three Fifty Seven, okay. and I had Thresh on the podcast, and then that dude was blowing it up. He okay. was like, he was putting stuff up. Yeah. He was going on YouTube, making his uh, own okay. reels and yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, do your thing, bro. Yeah, like yeah. we did an interview. Or you want to talk about? Man, put your stuff out there. Yeah, yeah. I like it, and I'll add it to my story exactly. too. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and I had never met 357, mm. and then uh, we were up there at uh, Joe's Girl. Gabby, okay, yeah, Gabby yeah, Mitten yeah, was yeah. playing at uh, Martin. Okay. And 357 was there, and the Dank was like, you, you know, mm. I was like, nah, I don't know yeah, him, I know him. I know who he is. Who he is yeah. And he was like, oh, you're the fool that it's the podcast, right? I was like, yeah. Mm. It's like, sweet. It'd be like that, man. <laughs> That's the thing about four. It'd be like, like that. We man. know like we know people that we don't know we know. Yeah, yeah. Like they know of us and we know of them. Mm-hmm. And then you'd be at a bar sometime drinking a beer, like, bro, where'd I know you from? Like, oh yeah, so and so knows so and so and I'm the dude that was oh, okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. So we get into a lot of those conversations. So, and just, just out and about hanging out with people. Yeah. That's that's my big thing, is just networking, just yeah. just going out and trying to hang out with some people that I don't know. Yeah, yeah. And maybe I'll find somebody that does some shit that I don't know how to do. 
It's true, man. You'll find it, man. It's here. Ford has so much hidden talent. It's crazy. You know, so many people do different things. And that's the thing I like about Ford, bro. It's not, like, oversaturated. Exactly. Like, I feel like you can be an artist here. Like, for me, if you know me, Eric Evans, I have a specific sound. In Fort Worth, you're not going to find that sound. In Dallas, you might <coughs> find 10, 18 motherfuckers that sound just like me. You know, shit like that. So that's what I like about Fort Worth, man. It's like, it's not oversaturated, you know. If, yeah. If you're dope, you're going to stand out in Fort Worth. You know what I'm saying? If you're yeah. dope in Dallas, you're going to stand out, but you're going to be with. You gonna take, it's going to take some time yeah, it's to get take somebody some, to notice. You're going to be around with. 10 other motherfuckers that sound just like you or just as good as you, you know, so. That's that's another f- problem that I found with sh- trying to find shows here with mm-hmm. a certain vibe. Mm-hmm. Because in Fort Worth, like, there's, like, different levels. <laughs> yeah. Different levels yeah. of music. Yeah. Yeah. Like, some stuff is, like, super commercial. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, you can, you can see who's trying to go on, yeah. like, 106.1 yeah. or... And then you go to the other show and it's like, oh, this is just underground yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, this yeah. is... If this came out in 2007 mm-hmm. when Houston was popping mm-hmm. off, mm-hmm. y'all be killing it yeah, right yeah. now, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And like, there's and there's sometimes you just you hear different music and you hear different styles and yeah. it's like, man, this sounds like some California love shit yeah, from back yeah, in the yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. And like, there's nothing wrong with it. You just gotta find the vibe. Yeah, and yeah. The right person's gotta notice mm-hmm. you at the right time. Yeah, and then we often be like, hey, don't don't forget me. <laughs> but. Yeah. I'm gonna take another beer. Go another for beer. it, man. There's six of them in here. I ain't got work tomorrow. Man, <laughs> I think this is the first time anybody's beat me through a beer. No, my cousin has a couple of times, I think. Hey, but man. I'm on my second one. He on this first, man. <clears throat> you know me, you know I drink. I try to play catch up. <laughs> nah, man. Yeah, man, I was having a lot of technical difficulties mm. there for a while. Bro, I'd be shooting a podcast and then the phone would just cut off oh, okay, yeah. and I'd be like huh yeah and, I'd be like, start all over. and it's hard to start all over because you don't remember where it yeah. cut off at yeah, yeah. all right so you got so you're independent but you got your own label yeah man so I'm independent but I got my own independent label um so you signed to yourself yeah I signed to myself hell yeah what the fuck <laughs> like and I like it man because I got com- I got complete ownership of everything that I do like um like, bro, I mean, I'm not a big artist, like, and I don't want to be, like, like, I tell people, man, everybody has different definitions of success and what they want out of this music shit, um, and just out of life in general, you know, for me, bro, I want to be independent on 100% of my shit, be able to put my kids through private school, be able to buy a house, be able to live comfortable, yeah. go to the mall, nobody know who the fuck I am, but I can go do a show and pack that motherfucker out. Yeah. Some people have different aspirations yeah they want to be commercial and want to be um yes and and nothing's wrong with that but just understand and that's why i try to tell younger artists bro like don't get fucking caught up in what you see on social media just focus on what success means to you and just focus on that make a plan because my dad used to always make me make plans like literally detailed bro i used to have to be on excel spreadsheet making detailed (laughs) plans on how i'm gonna execute my goal yeah and um that's why i try to tell young dudes man like just what's your goal you know what i'm saying and what success means to you and just go for it you know like don't get caught up in this social media shit because it's all fake at the end of the day like yeah i mean you bro. can you can look like social media can make you look like bro a major label artist and you with bum me and you at home trash but you look like you you know a uh, commercial fake it till you make it bro like some people live by that <sighs> they do but i mean it's only so much you can do, you know what I'm saying? Like, no, um, I know. Like, like, because everybody that comes in on the podcast, I tell them that, bro, we shoot this with a USB mic and an iPhone. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. I don't, I'm not Maybe. I'm not over here pretending that I got, like, mics and this room is soundproof. Bro, and I record all my music anybody's ever heard. It's most like, it's been in my fucking, like, in a room like this. Yeah. It's nothing fancy, you know what I'm saying? But uh, it gets the job done, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you know? And, uh, but, yeah. I forgot what the fuck we were talking about. <laughs> no. Oh, so I was talking. Uh, what the last dude I had on? Yeah. Goldsby. Mm. He's a. He's like heavily inspired by My Chemical Romance and like alternative yeah, yeah, rock yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm metal and Yeah. So I I told him I was like he goes he told me he's like I record my music in a room where there's not a door all the time like the doors open mm. like it's not a room like like a room room it's like like a, I guess like a hallway off or whatever. Okay. And he's like, so there's so many recordings that I have to just go back and delete mm-hmm. because picking up on okay, other yeah. p- other people in the background mm-hmm. and shit. And 
Like so, I mean, but everybody's got to start somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, in like, dude, I'm not a musically talented mm-hmm. person. Yeah. Like the best I could do is I could probably scream vocals. Uh, okay. If I had to, yeah. but I wouldn't just like sign up and like I'm the scream vocal <laughs> guy. Yeah. Like I would never do that. Yeah. And, but like I used to put a piano in like fourth grade. Okay. And it was not. I mean, the lady used to give me candy bars, so it was like, fuck it. Okay, I'm gonna play piano to get some candy bars out of this. I used to play the viola, bro. Hey, my my baby mama plays the viola. There's actually two of them sitting right there on that show. Damn, I ain't played that bitch since fifth grade though. And uh, but yeah, dude, there's stuff like that. Like, like I feel like music is also like. I don't know, like acting or, or anything. Yeah. Like, you got to be like 100%. Like, this is what you want. You want this in your repertoire yeah. of life. Mm-hmm. Because if you're not all in, then no one's going to believe you're all in. Yep. yep. And people can see it, man. And for sure. Yeah, people can see it. Like, because, I mean, I've, I've been at plenty of shows when dudes are up there on stage, and it's just like, he's not really you're into it. You're not really this. into it. He just, like, he's yeah. just seeing what he can do with it. Yeah. And, I mean, granted, there is a place for that. Like, mm-hmm. sometimes guys are like, well, let me just see. Yeah, yeah. Let yeah, me see yeah. if, if this is a venue I could actually mm-hmm. pursue. Yeah. And then they get up there and they're like, oh, no, I love this. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. Like, good for you, bro. You found a calling. You yeah. found what you want to do. Hell yeah, man. It's crazy. All right, man. So, where'd you kick it spots? Like, I ain't trying to rat what you mean, out, but like, kick it spots. all right. So, you was at Boomers the other night. Yeah, which, bo- which Boomers was you at? Damn, bro. I was in the Boomers in Bedford. In Bedford? I, actually, yeah, I took myself out, man. I, I do a lot of things by myself. Shout out to all my baby mamas, though, too. Um, that ass shout out to y'all hey man that's where I get inspiration from man yeah. as of lately this off topic <laughs> that's just, fine, like, bro. just life bro just like, oh my baby mama's be stressing me out my guy like I post a lot of funny shit on social media just so I can laugh bro just, mine's in the other room over there hey, just, I'm, we're recording at her house <laughs> <laughs> talking about stressing you out <laughs> she'd be stressing me out and then what I do man is I put that into my music man yeah. and then it's not even I mean, that ain't why I make music or nothing, but, um, man, my life, bro, everything in my life, I just, music is therapeutic. That's For what sure. I say. Like, I don't, I don't do drugs. Like, all the homies danking on me, they think I'm a square ass nigga because I don't smoke weed and I don't. Oh, you don't smoke at all? No, no, I don't smoke. Like, nigga, I smoke, I'm gonna go to sleep. Hey, bro. And I ain't gonna wake up to the Bro, I ain't gonna lie. So, we went to that Dank Fest at Martin House. Yeah. And me and me and Dank were there. They had a weed that was like infused with. Uh, it smelled like weed when you drank the beer. Yeah. Oh shit. Okay. So I drank it. Didn't get nothing off of it. Yeah. And then I got another strong beer. But when I got there, this dude was like, "We got these CBD Delta uh, Eight edibles." <laughs> He's like 250 milligrams, and I'm like, "I said, like, but it's not weed, right?" Yeah. He's like, "No, I can't just hand you an edible but with real weed up, in it, right? bro." Yeah. I ate I ate this gummy <laughs> that was like the size of like. Oh, a gumball or something. Mm. I just um, I ate it like a Welch's fruit mm-hmm. snack. I and I was sitting there drinking with Dank, and I started looking at Dank, mm-hmm. and I was like, bro, my eyes are getting heavy. Mm-hmm. And then he's like, we're going to go smoke. And I'm like, not me, bro. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. <laughs> and they left me at the table with some broad. Yeah. Some girl was sitting there. I guess her man was playing the set. Mm-hmm. But she was real chatty, bro. Yeah, okay. And I was feeling it, and I was like, I was like, as soon as she looks at her phone, I'm just going to jump up and run away. <laughs> and I was sitting there, and sure enough, bro, she looked at her phone, and I just went, Whoop. Mm-hmm. and I walked all the way around the brewery to yeah. my car, because really? I was like, I wasn't trying yeah. to walk past her. Damn. Yeah, Session got fucked up like that, too. He Dude, was... I fell asleep in the car yeah. for like five hours. Really? Damn, bro. That's, that's pretty bad. I was supposed to be at that full step Co show in Oak Cliff, oh, okay. and I was like, hmm. I ain't going to make it. And then I was supposed, to, making it I was supposed like to be that. at another show. Or a, a, like a video release mm. on seventh mm. at like five o'clock. Didn't mm. I slept right through right, that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh man. And I text and Dan, and then Dank said he went home and went to sleep too. Mm-hmm. And he he texted me. He said, you got the address for the Oak Cliff spot? Mm. I was like, no. uh uh-uh, uh, bro. I'm about to get an Uber. <laughs> like I'm going home. I ain't night. going nowhere. It's Mimi's time, man. I went That's home crazy. and proceeded to eat everything there. Man. And then I slept for like twelve hours straight. Shit, that was. A- CBD, what, what was it? It was a CBD? CBD with like a little bit of Delta 8, which they say is like 3.25 milligrams. And Delta 8 is legal? And Delta 8 is legal, bro. Because it's not like, there's like a loophole. No, there's no did. like jurisdiction on it. Is that like, uh, what's that shit? South, what's that South? Like, like Savia, like back in the day. Yeah, I mean, it's similar, but they said it's derived from oh, actual okay. weed, mm. but like in low, low mm. dosages. But, bro, it, yeah, I don't know if it was the beer mixing it mm. or what it was, but, bro, I was hardcore asleep in that yeah, car. Yeah, yeah. 
That's crazy. I, I got my keys. I threw them on the floor in the passenger side. Yeah. Leaning the seat back, and I was just there sweating <laughs> on leather seats with the windows cracked. Mm. I was they like, had that man fucked up. I was like, I get it to the house, bro, don't, but don't, I can't drive. Don't do no CBD shit, man. And that gummy fucked me up for yeah. sure. <laughs> I text Dank. I was like, bro, I'm a weenie, bro. I yeah. used that fake weed and got all fucked up. Got fucked up, bro. Hmm. But all right, man. So I got I got to bring up the uh, talk to me, man. The, the Michael Jordan Scotty Pippen comparison that Dank uses. <sighs> I don't know, bro. Cause <laughs> the funny thing is, this nigga got beat by this nigga. He can't. He can't beat me one on one when it comes to basketball. That's a fact. He can barely beat me when it comes to racing. Um, but he lost the title, bro. Oh, he lost the title. Oh, lost the title. Tavo, Tavo. Tavo, hey, Tavo, fast, bro. That nigga, he. Hey, he, hey, he's fast. Man. He won that race. Tavo went on that yeah. won that race, and yes. his victory lap was going all the way to yeah. freaking watch the Cowboys yeah. beat Tampa Bay. Man, That's a hell of a victory lap, bro. Hey, man, hey, Tavo, shout out to my nigga Tavo, man. He, um, yeah, he beat him like three times, and it was pretty bad, bro. Um, but I can't talk, you know what I'm saying? Because I got my ass beat by dang, too. But um, the Scotty comparison, I don't know, man. Just one, this one day, this nigga, man, we, it's funny because we was in Colorado. And that's the funny thing. Me and Dank, man, that's my nigga. But me and, me and him sometimes go head to head because we both competitive and shit like that. I know because I brought you up. I brought, I brought you the podcast yeah. with him. I brought you up. He's like, yeah, man, I'm like a Jordan. He's Scotty Pippen. Mm. And I was like. We we, we, we competitive. As, well, it's all love at the end of the day. That's like yeah. my big brother. Um, literally, that's literally like my big brother. That's how he acts. It's like my big brother. Um we were in Colorado. He said that shit. And I was like, nigga, like, what? <laughs> like, bro, I was legit like, about to fight this nigga, bro. Uh, like, nah, nigga, like. Fuck out of here. But then, uh, but nah, man, it's just, I like it, man. It keeps me going competitive. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, man, it's all love between all of us, man. We all want to yeah. see each other win. And that's the thing, too, man. Like, I want to see my niggas win. Like, exactly. Bro. Everybody. I've never been one of those type of dudes that's like, oh, I don't want to see you win type shit. If you show genuine love to me, I fuck with you. You know what I'm saying? If you don't. That's like, like those Instagram posts. It's like, all I'm trying to pull up in this is like, no, I'm trying to pull up with all my boys and we yeah. all got this. Yeah, we all like, got it. And we, like, we all made it. Yeah. Like, and then if somebody, if, like, if somebody blows up, like, because I know other podcasters, mm -hmm. like, if y'all blow up and y'all are syndicated, mm -hmm. y'all are on XM radio yeah. and shit, good for y'all, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. Like, I ain't never going to sit here and hate on nobody. Be like, for what? if y'all were, if y'all was nothing, y'all started a podcast and y'all yeah. just kept running with it, and then exactly. someone found y'all. That's awesome, yeah. bro. It's inspiration, man. Like, show them one of my videos. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But like saying. other dudes that want to start podcasts that are already like famous and mm. celebrities, I ain't gonna name no <laughs> names. But it's like, bro, you already got a calling and you already established as a person. So it's a quick bag. Cut man. that shit out, bro. Okay. Like, you got other shit to do. What podcast do you listen to? Honestly, me right now. Yeah. I still listen to Joe Rogan because I've always listened to Joe Rogan's podcast, yeah. and I listen to a comedian, Chris D'Elia, okay. his podcast, Congratulations, yeah. and then he does a call-in show with his brother where mm -hmm. people call in and ask questions, and it's called Lifeline. Lifeline. So they give therapy, like, therapy advice, but okay. they're not therapists. Yeah, that's, that's fucked up. <laughs> it is fucked up, <laughs> like, but it's funny, bro. Yeah, that's crazy. So it's like, no, honestly, that's the only shit I keep up with. I used to keep up with like six or seven podcasts. Oh, yeah. And then I mean I tune in on the local the local circuit, yeah. uh Forever Reckless, the yeah. Funky Panther yeah. podcast. Uh hey, shout out to the Funky Panther podcast. Y'all should put me on your podcast. Hey, I'm Eric Evans. Chad, do it. Yeah, let's go, man. Javier, do it. <laughs> and uh and then uh like uh thanks for the invitation. Mm. Uh those dudes I went to high school with a couple of them okay. back in the day, so like there's just and then like uh what's the other dude? Fort Worth Roots. Okay, yeah. Like I met the dude Aaron that runs that one. Okay. I think his name's Aaron. I was drunk that day at the Panthers, so I don't fucking remember. It'd be like that, bro. All right, so you gonna you gonna play in this kickball game or what? Hell yeah, I'm gonna play in it. Who, um, whose team you on? I think I'm on Dank's team for sure. I'm on Dank's um, team. He invited me, but I don't know if he remembered. But he he asked me if I wanted to be on the team. He's got um, he's got he got like see, he got some serious. I mean, we all athlete athletes at the end of the day. Like I used to hoop overseas type shit. So like, I'm an athlete. I think Ernie's on there. Yeah, he yeah. Ernie said he's down. Yeah. I talked to Ernie about it. So I mean, I don't know if Ty was gonna be a part of it, but I mean, like, and then what? It's against Fosepko, right? I don't know who Lewis has got I like don't. running. <laughs> oh, dang, but hey, but that's where that's where this podcast is going. My next oh, step no. is is gonna be chilling up there at Cricket um, Tooth recording this. Man, here pretty soon. Where you gonna be, be at Cricket Tooth? Oh shit! Recording this. This yeah. next couple of months, I'll be that way. Hmm. So. uh 
Well, I don't, that's kind of a major announcement, but yeah. Yeah, if anybody nah, gets to this yeah. part and y'all hear it, but <laughs> I won't, I won't make a reel out of that because there's still some uh, fine tuning I gotta go I through with that. I, man, I like, I like that studio, man. I like what Luis has done to it, man. And um, man, he, man, he's running everything there. Like, he is, man. But at, man, hey, I don't know if he got some AC in that studio for Sepco. If you got AC in the studio, cause summer, what? It is, I guess it's winter time now, but nigga, in that studio and in the summertime. Hot than a bitch. Bro, I'm going to get one of those room nah. ACs if I nah, need to. Nah, bro. It's different. Nah. <laughs> it's different. Nah, bro. That's, this, this, that's different. No air Well, okay, so that's that's my that's my short-term plan. So, my long-term plan is, nobody knows this, but I'm going to build a studio. Where? It'll be here in Fort Worth. Okay. And hey, I build shit for a living, bro. So oh, you need, we'll I'm, talk about this in a second. If you then. need a maestro. I'm here, man. We'll talk. We'll talk. I'm. 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 I'm planning <laughs> on building a fucking man cave slash okay. fucking game room yep. slash podcast room. Like I'm. I'm planning on building this motherfucker here in like the next six months. That's what's up. Yeah. So. Congrats, man. That's that's the plan. Well, well, we gotta see how that rolls, though. Oh, but it, the plan is that. But yeah, man. So I'm on my third beer, bro. God damn, bro. It's light work right here, man. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, bro. And I gotta drive home. I've been drinking since. Uh... Oh, you been drinking already? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> okay. Dude, I started drinking at uh, probably like three o'clock. Oh shit! All right, I'll take that back. I'm sorry. I had uh, I had time. I had an IPA. I had a Keystone because I was just like, I just need something to, to mellow me out, and then bro. came over here. Had a Budweiser. I was like, man. And then I had to go get beer. Were you drinking Budweisers? I ain't mixing all kinds oh, of shit, bro. Fuck. I can't talk. I drink for a loco, so. Oh! <laughs> you trying to party, bro? <laughs> you biting on me. You know, I used to drink for a loco. I was like a motherfucker. And drive home. We used to put them in a... All right, I ain't going to name the shop I used to work at. Because I'm a mechanic. So I used okay. to work at a shop. Oh, shit. You a mechanic? And on Wednesdays, we would... Uh, we <laughs> we would <laughs> we would send a dude across the street... And they had those big, like, 64-ounce styrofoam cups. Yeah. And you fill it up with ice, yeah. but the four locals fit in there perfect. Yeah. So we'd be in there drinking lemonade in Damn, the shop. Damn, boy, you fucked up. And, but that didn't happen until after, like, 5.30. So if no, y'all was okay. there during the day, he was cool. Yeah. He was the last oil change. That, shit, <laughs> that drain plug might be loose, my mm. bad. <laughs> but we used to sit there, and we had this one boss. They started making us work till like, 7.30 at night. It was already Damn. dark in the winter. Shit. And he would go get like a to- he get two of those uh two of the sixteen ounce can yeah. six packs of Bud Ice, and I'll be like, bro, we should be <laughs> fucked up before we go home. Goddamn, come home just fucking collapse on the couch Ooh. and just sleep. <clears throat> there was only there was only three of us there, and he got twelve beers. I'm like, bro, this, yeah. this shit is strong as fuck. That's crazy. We didn't be just just got three forties. We been good. Three forties, man. Dude, I haven't drank a forty since high school, bro. I ain't never drunk 40, bro. I just can't imagine drinking that much beer. Oh. Fuck hell, man. That's crazy. It'd be Shout getting hot, though. Huh? It'd be getting hot. You drink oh, really? 40? Nah, it start getting warm. Shout out to my boy Spencer Lee. He drinks those shits, man. Oh, Mikey's? Isn't that what it's called? Mikey's. Mickey's. Mickey's or some shit? That malt lick. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that gonna throw up, bro. Oh, boy, we drinking that shit. Shout out to my boy Spencer Lee, man. Have you ever had those, uh... Corona Megas. I drink Modelo. It's like a it's like a forty of Corona in a brown bottle. Uh, they sell them at Trader's Village. Nah. Shout and out shout out to Trader's Village. Shout too. out to Trader's Village. Man, I haven't been out there since bro. I bought my favorite pair of sunglasses that I I'll lost. I'll tell you a funny story. I used to fuck with this Mexican bitch, bro. This girl had me working at Trader's Village selling selling shit with her mom, and that shit was hard, bro. <laughs> that shit was hard, bro. Shout out to all my Hispanics out there in Trader's Village. Bro, what was you selling? I don't remember, bro. I was just trying to get some pussy, bro. I ain't gonna lie, dog. She was like, come down here on Saturday. Help me with my mom, bro. And um, I went down there. Had to unload the shit. That shit was hard work, bro. But I was trying to get the pussy, bro. Hey, you know, sometimes, Um, man, sometimes you do some shit that you don't really want to do. I ain't even get the pussy. Oh, man. She she just used the name. Bro, you gotta change the end to that story. Don't tell it like that again. Just be like, and you know, <laughs> no. and then just be quiet. <laughs> just don't say you did, but just be like, and hey, you nah, know. Nah, bro. Shout out, shout out to Traders Village, man. Man, I just get turkey legs out there. Man. I like the back end of Traders Village where it's still like a flea market. I ain't been back there, man. 
they tore down that fleet market in uh, uh, was it Henderson? Jasper or yeah, yeah, near Henderson on. Uh, they tore it down all the way. I think it's, it's no. More. Uh, they were saying they were gonna close it. Yeah. But I think I tried to pull up over there the other day. And she worked there too. Her mama had two spots. Straight Man, in there. She's she was making dope. Getting all the hustle in. Yeah, she was getting that money. Hey man. Man, some of those snacks, bro. I'm just thinking about food right now from Trader's Village. Yeah. Funnel cakes and shit. I get that. Um, I get the corn shit. And that's a cool. So, I mean, I say, and I tell people this all the time, man. Like, cool thing about me being around the world and all this shit. I never grew up with Hispanic people. No. Never grew up with Mexicans. There was no Mexicans in the United Kingdom. Bro. Nigga, hell no. You see fucking Mexican <laughs> in the UK, bro. Nigga, they, they, <laughs> no, like. <laughs> <laughs> they not over there. You never see a Mexican in the UK, and if they do, they got money, 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 money. Bro, money, what kind? Money. What's the food like in the UK, bro? All right, so the food like in the UK. Okay, is trash. but like, okay, do they got like street food though? Nigga, they got, nigga, hell no, no. But I'll say in the UK, they got really good breakfast food, bro. My nigga, beans, I heard they be eating beans, beans bro. Beans and toast. I got told beans today, and toast, bro. Nigga. Beans and toast, you'll be surprised. How is it like beans. refried beans or like? Nigga, it's just baked beans. Nigga. Baked beans and toast? Refried beans, bro. I ain't had refried beans all <laughs> over to Texas. All right, so yeah, this is a whole nother topic. We're talking about. <laughs> so, yeah, we talk about the UK food. So, in the UK, the food is trash, but the breakfast is good. Um, they don't believe in seasoning. <laughs> so, yeah. Nigga, yo, I had a sausage. That shit was bloody. It was a blood sausage. That shit was disgusting. Um, what else? All right, but the Indian food is fucking amazing. Oh, the yeah? Indian, like, I tell people, like, how, you know how, like, um, in Texas, the demographic is a lot of uh, Hispanics, whatever, yeah. uh, Latinas or whatever. Over there, it's, like, um, Indian people, Pakistani people, stuff like that. Well, I mean, yeah, because that's, that's closer to the, yeah, that closer, part of the yeah, world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, they, they come that over there. That makes sense. Yeah. So, their food is fucking good as shit. So, all the curries, all that shit is good. Dude, I didn't know I liked curry until I was with a chick and she's like, oh, you need to try this. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. I'm like, oh, this is amazing. Yeah, yeah. Curry's good, bro. But China, bro. Hey, shout out to all my niggas in China, bro. China, that food was good, bro. And that shit was like two cents. That shit was like 25 cents, bro. Like when you converted from U.S. dollars to over there, that shit was good, bro. Like, I remember the first time I went over there, I had some soup, bro. And it was like, um, it was fucking fish in the soup. Yeah. Was, like, damn, they're still alive. Um... <laughs> Damn, that shit crazy. Shout out to my parents too. My parents, man. Shout out to my 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 dad, man. He ain't my biological father, but that he raised me since I was two years old. So that is like my father, um, because man, he allowed us to go out there with him. He could have just been over there working. And just, oh, so 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 you weren't not military, bro. Oh no, I no, military. you said that not, but no, so no. Did well, he worked yeah, in these places. Yeah, my my dad worked over there, bro, and um, like my dad worked over there, so he took he took the family with us and he. He took us over there, so that was pretty dope, man. Cause I went, I went to school with a lot of kids, man, and their dads wasn't even there, bro. Their dads would just be in that country and they just send money home or, you know, come back home. Hey. But my my dad took us with him and we got to experience all that shit, man. So I'm forever grateful for my parents, bro. Bro, you extra culture, bro. I'm extremely culture. Sure. Niggas be trying to make fun of me and all this shit. I'm culture, nigga, but I haven't been through shit too. I'm trying to take. Well, we need to go to an Asian rest, or Chinese restaurant, bro. Like, nigga, there's one in Hawthorne City that's really good. Um, we need to go. I guess whatever, bro. We need to go, bro. Cause I've been over there at Hawthorne City. I'd be going to that bro. that that uh the grocery store. Oh yeah. And I'd be getting them fucking hot ass noodles and shit mm-hmm. over there. Mm-hmm. Cause you can't. Get those at the regular grocery store, bro. Man, bro, I'll Hawthorne, be dying though, bro. Baltimore <laughs> City probably got they got some of the best Asian food. Um, but Carrollton, though, you gotta go to Carrollton. You gotta go to Carrollton. Carrollton got some good, um, they got a whole Asian market. Bro, how much you got left of that? Oh, I got like half, bro. I gotta got slow the fuck down. Nah, you good, man. There's still more in the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> I just slow down. That's bro. that's a that's one of my super fucking superpowers, bro. <laughs> You've been drinking since three. I'll be. I'll sleep in the car if I had to. I'll drive to the job right now. I'll sleep in the car. <laughs> nah, bro. I'll wake up on time. I already showered and everything. <laughs> He's already showered. I got the whore bag in the trunk. Throw my yeah. shorts on. To get my jacket. Get ready, bro. Walk inside. <laughs> if it's real bad, I call my boss. Like, hey, uh, I ain't. I ain't gonna be up there, bro. He goes, I saw your car in the parking lot. I was like, yeah, I'm in it, bro. But I can't go in. <laughs> That's funny. He said it's real bad. Like that's I can't, crazy. I can't go inside, bro. I can't that's do it wild. today. Man, that's crazy, bro. So, like, how did you get into like this shit? Like, 
Like what? The music scene, man. Dude, that's that's a fun, that's a fucking funny question. Yeah. Um, honestly, bro, um, I don't really get into a lot of my personal shit on the podcast, okay. but I, I mean, I, I do occasionally. Yeah. So, like, we're recording this at my baby mama's house. Yeah. Technically, and my ex-wife, technically, whatever, mm. all the dot 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 and all that <laughs> bullshit. But um, so I get my kids every other week. Okay. So one of the big things that I wanted to influence my son with. Mm. Is music okay. because he was he would start sharing music with me. Yeah. He was listening to like Tyler the Creator, Childish Gambino, mm-hmm. and then he would just start sending me music yeah, yeah. like Kanye West, okay. not Ye, not some of the crazy stuff, <laughs> but crazy. Kanye West, yeah, yeah. and um, like he just started hitting me with music like ASAP Rocky, and like yeah. we, I would just start going through the vibes, and I was like. Dude, I'm, I was like holy roller for a long time, bro. Uh, like I was supposed yeah, to be a pastor at a church, really? <laughs> and uh, that shit didn't work out. <laughs> that shit didn't but work uh, out. but yeah, so like one of my big things with my yeah. oldest son was mm-hmm. I wanted to go start seeing um, like local artists. Okay. So, um, like out of Fort Worth, the biggest local artist we have is Lou Charles. Obviously, yeah. So shout out to Lou Charles, man. Yeah. So Lou Charles did Lou Palooza yep, yep. six, the last dance mm-hmm. that he did at Tulips. But prior to that, I had gone. I had met uh, Joe. We met okay, Joe yeah. at uh, Wild Acre, yeah. just randomly drinking up there on a Saturday, and he was up there performing. That nigga be drunk. And I was like, "Hey, man, that dude's <laughs> rapping about beer." So I was like, "Hey, man, what's up?" And we started talking, and we were chit chatting. Yeah. And then uh, he's like, "Yeah, hey, man, check out some of my shows. Yeah. I play." He was telling me the venues and stuff, and I said, like, "That's cool, man." Yeah. And then little by little, through Joe, I met Dank. Okay. And then. Through Dank, I met oh, oh, a fucking bunch of shit, shitload of people. Bro. A lot of people, yeah. Like, what, Dank was just like, tonight, Dank's going to be, I guarantee you, Dank's at curfew tonight. <laughs> Probably, yeah. And, it's, like, I'm still Monday, debating, yeah. like, am I going to curfew tonight? Have you been? Yeah, okay, I went yeah, up there yeah. with him, and then okay. uh, the dude that put on the show, uh, man, I can't remember that fool's name. Des, I don't know, I don't remember his real oh, name. But his Instagram shit is Demolina. Okay. And he was buying the drinks, buckets of beers. The last oh, really? time I, I went down there, so I was just like, all right, man, Dink said it's cool. He said, yeah, man, grab a beer. I was like, all right, man. But little stuff like that. And then so I bought tickets to see, oh, no, I won tickets mm. to see. No, I bought tickets to the Gucci Mane okay, yeah. at Wild Acre. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Lou Charles did a raffle okay. for the uh, Lupe Fiasco. Yeah, okay. And I won that raffle. Oh, shit. So I took my older son to both of those oh, shows. Damn. And then I took... My older son to Blue Palooza. Okay. And that's when I linked up with Kai Woods. That was the opener. Okay. And me and Kai are working together that's now on some stuff. That's dope, man. That's a good bonding and experience. Yeah, man. for sure. Like, he's 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 in these concerts. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, wait. Yeah. Like, is this what? Yeah. Because, <laughs> yeah. like, the Lupe Fiasco stuff. And yeah. then, like, the Gu- like the Gucci Mane was a big one for us. Because I was like, I remember I, when mm-hmm. I would listen to Gucci mm-hmm. Mane. And then we're standing there, and he's he's singing along the songs, and I'm like, damn, this is badass mm-hmm. for bonding moments mm-hmm. for sure. And then, so we started doing those, and then we would do Joe's pop ups okay. at like Bearded Lady and stuff, yeah, yeah, and uh, and I just kind of started. And then like Joe comes to the house, we'll have a cookout, and okay. Joe and Gabby will show <laughs> yeah, up. And yeah. We're cooking meat, Shout and out to J-O-E, man. yeah, like he was the first guest I had on the podcast, mm. and like I felt like it had to be Joe because. Yeah. Like, he's the one that really got me rolling into, yeah. like, just meeting people oh, and okay. hanging out. Yeah. And I'd show up, oh, man, this is Rob. Hey, Rob, yeah, this yeah. is so-and-so. This is so-and-so. Yeah. So, like, it was, it was like, man, I got to have Joe on first yeah, because. Yeah. And Joe, man, he's a, he's a, man, Joe is, um, that was, that's crazy. Joe's one of the first, the first artists I met when I came to Texas. Actually, I actually reached out to Joe and said, hey, man, I just moved out here from the U.K., not put me on, but hey, where y'all be at? Yeah. And I pulled up to um damn, what the fuck was it called? It was um some brewery. And I pulled up and I met Mil- I met Milky Beats and I met a few other people, man. And Do um, I still met Milky Beats. Yeah, man. I met him. he was cool. He's he's a very educational guy. He's gonna give you he's gonna give you some advice and shit. He's gonna yeah. he's gonna point you in the right direction. But like I like and then just linking up with Joe just little by little and mm-hmm. then like Hanging out with my son and going to different shows. Like, we did 3-6 Mafia mm. when Smooth Vega put that yep, one on. Yep. And then I did DJ Paul at the Haltom Theater. Mm. Dank performed yeah. on that one. Yeah. And then just, like, anybody that anybody that want to talk to me about yeah. anything, I just start talking to them. Yeah, okay. And that's, that's what that dude Thrust that works at 357. Yeah. 
Uh, I met him through a friend of a friend, yeah. and he was like, check out my music, bro. And I was like, who do you work with? Mm. And he was like, I work with 357. And I was like, well, fuck, Joe works with 357. Yeah, yeah, so I was yeah. like, okay. So it's like these are people. In, and then I told that dude, I was like, hey, man, check out Dank. Check out Full Step Code. Check yeah, out this. Yeah, check out. Yeah. Like, these are local artists. These are the shows you need to try to jump on yeah. if you can get a foot in. Yeah. Like, because like, uh, they're doing Bumping Shoulders at Tulips okay. in February for Step Co. Okay, yeah. And, uh, oh, yeah, and Joe's on that show. Okay. And When's that? Uh, I want to say it's a Thursday night. I want to say okay. it's the 23rd, February okay. 23rd. But don't, okay. don't 100% quote me on that. Yeah. But, uh, but Fo has like actual like hardcore tickets, yeah, okay. so I'm gonna have to get a couple of those just yeah. just to have like a hardcore copy yeah, of the yeah, ticket. Yeah. Keep it, man. Yeah. But 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 so f- the Lou Palooza, I met Kai Woods, and then I started hanging out with him. Yeah, uh, met Accomplice from out in Dallas, okay. and then uh, he was performing at shows with Big Tuck and Tum Tum, okay. and yeah, uh, I met who did I meet? I met Cap G through one of those shows. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like just just just. Make connections, saying what's up to people. Yeah. Like, it's got to go out, man. I mean, and it's be on Wednesday night sometimes, yeah, bro. It's crazy, be like, man. dang, it be like that, man. It and really do, man. it is what it, I mean. And the venues here, like Tulips, is always done to put on a show. Yeah. They close Mass, but they're gonna reopen at Cicada man, soon. Man, Mass, shout out to Mass. We, I did a sold out show at Mass, and this is man. Mass was a spot, bro. Yeah. A lot of people don't know about Mass. It's crazy. Like because just of where it was sitting at. Yeah. And I hope I hope for all intents and purposes all the Mass crowd goes goes to Cicada when it opens up. I wonder why they shut down though. Dude, a lot of that. Like, I feel like a lot of businesses fucking suffer from COVID, bro. Okay, maybe why? Because that time frame. Yeah. Just no money coming in. Yeah. And a lot of a lot of bars went to a restaurant mm-hmm. and started serving like bullshit food. Okay. Yeah. I don't know what they did yeah. to stay fluctuating. Cause I'll be wondering, man. Like I've noticed, like even on Seventh Street, bro. How much time we got? We got a good amount of time. Like, oh shit, bro. There's not no fucking limit. Right, right, Forty-one man. minutes, bro. <laughs> All right, shit. Dude, like, these motherfuckers run like an hour and thirty cool. minutes sometimes. Say less. <laughs> um, I've noticed, man. Like just even being on Seventh Street, and I've always wondered why. And maybe the obvious answer, maybe the rents went up or whatever. But um, like it's always new bars, bro. I think I think a lot of it is like um, like the TCU crowd fucking takes over. Really? Okay. And then I think they have to kind of well because I know like what was it Varsity got hit with lawsuits and shit because really? they wouldn't yeah. let people in. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I couldn't get in there, bro. Really? And I only had like I had only had one forearm tattoo at okay. the time. Now I got the hand tat, the neck yeah, tat, yeah, yeah, inside man. the lip, all kind yeah. of shit. <laughs> they now they ain't let me in nowhere. I got my hands tatted, but I don't know. They might still let me in. I look like Carlton sometimes when I no, nah, bro. I showed up. I showed up at Varsity one time with like a Dickies golf shirt on <laughs> and some khaki shorts and Sperry's. And I was like, and I was like, hey, uh, what's yeah, up? Yeah, he's saying, hey, they no, they no, patted no, me no, down no. and like, you can't come in. I'm like, why not? Yeah, that's crazy. I didn't have a baseball cap on. I had short hair at the time. Bro had Sperry's on. And that's I was like, crazy. bro, I'm wearing like the the uniform right yeah. now, like. And they're like, oh, no, nah, nobody can come in. I was like, and I had like, I had like 17 people with me. We were a big crowd. And they said, and can't. they told me I couldn't come in. And we all walked off. Yeah. And, and the one dude was like, As you Fuck. should. I had a lot of good times on 7th, man. My 7th. I don't really fuck with seven now because niggas be getting killed at that moment. Yeah, I don't. I don't go over there, bro. Hey, if you, hey, use this as a real. Hey, if you on Seventh Street, hey, make sure you fucking be safe. Carry your strap. Um. Carry your strap for real, cause niggas is getting killed on Seventh Street. For what? It's frat boys out there. Yeah, like, man, it's not. It's man, not that serious. Once at I all. start seeing like hood niggas out there, <laughs> I was like, oh hell nah, bro, I'm done. I gotta go to Magnolia. I gotta go to Grandma's. Yeah, man. Yeah, Magnolia. Magnolia is what Seventh was probably like five, six years ago. Yeah, yeah. Magnolia is that spot. Yeah. Maine is, like, Maine over there where uh, Nickel City is, yep, yep. the Nickel Bearded City, Lady. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they got the Tiki Lounge over there. Yeah. The Nickel City opened up uh, the Down and Out mm-hmm. at the very end by, on Rosedale. Yep, it's yep. a dive bar, bro. They got two pool tables in there. Oh, really? yeah. But it's chill. Yeah. Like, ain't nobody even trying to start no fights. We just trying to oh, go yeah. post up and have a good time. You go 7th Street, nigga, you might die. Like, the, the closest I get to 7th is I always shout out the rabbit hole. Mm, it's on right. White Settlement Road over there by the funeral home. Okay. It used to be MVPs back in the day. Mm. And I, I'll post up over there. You ever been to Dino's back in the day? No. You ever been to Dino's? Uh-uh. Damn. You know where Dino's is? 
No. Oh, it's on Ray Street. On Ray Street? Yeah. Is it still there? Nah, that shit. That shit Man, Ray Street's all, uh, they're trying to build all that oh, up yeah. too. Gentrification. Man. They got, the the post is the only thing over there yeah, right now that's real right big. Yeah. They got a brewery over there. Yeah. But I really ain't going to any nobody, yeah. nowhere else over there at the park. We used to have a studio. That's the funny thing. Me, Dank, and um, Kinky K. We uh, we used to rent out an art studio. It's funny. We used to rent out an art studio. Our art studio was uh, it was an art studio, but we rented it out as a recording studio. We used to record out of there. So Oh, for real? Hell yeah. And it's crazy. Cause well, but like, Dank was, Dank's from over there. That Riverside area. Riverside area, yeah. Yeah. And it's crazy because like it looks nice, but at nighttime you see a whole bunch of crackheads on the Oh yeah, man. That's it. Like, uh, the they had a sneaker shop over yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. The motherfucker think... getting robbed. Yeah. <laughs> I was. Dang, you in the wrong area. I went in there bro. looking at looking at Jordan ones. Yeah. And I was like, bro, you in the wrong. Nigga, you in the wrong area. Like, what is it called? Locals only. You in the wrong area. I don't care. Y'all yeah. in the wrong area. Y'all need to get the fuck out of. Riverside. <laughs> go They're there. trying to make it better, bro. Bruh. Nah, nigga, y'all niggas need to leave. Y'all got robbed like three times. But I mean, I you feel like leave. that's that's like a, there's a lot of spots like that that they tried to do something with. Like you know, you know over there on Rosedale where they got that Seven Eleven and that Jack in the Box mm-hmm. on on the wrong side of the highway. Oh yeah, yeah. Yes. And like, there's always a homeless dude <laughs> in the drive-through. Like, bro, tell him, tell him you need four waters. <laughs> He's always there. And there's always one homeless dude like, telling you need four waters. They send the next guy up every time. And then, like, I pulled up to the window. She's like, I'm going to give you your food. I'm not giving you four waters. I know it's for the homeless guy. And it's like, oh, man. That I was sucks, like, man. he was, he was like, leaning into my car. What was I supposed to do? Like, I just wanted him to leave me alone. And that 7 is bad, too, bro. Like, oh, I, yeah. I tried to go in there and stop and get a six-pack one time. Man, I got stopped, like, six times from the gas bro. pump to the door. Bro, you you going to buy me some water? Hey, man, can you buy me a tall boy? Hey, man, come on, help me out. I just want some wings. Man, and that's like, crazy. But hey, we need, to, we need to solve the homeless homeless issue in America, man. Because when you go to other... Bro, I didn't been in... Bro, I didn't been in maybe 20 countries, bro. Yeah. And, like, from 18 years old to, like... No, for I'm probably for like fifteen to like nineteen years old, and uh, our homeless population, bro. Like when you go out, I mean, when you go out of the states, bro, out of America, you realize how fucked up it is here, bro. I believe you. The thing that's, I lo- that's what's fucked up, bro. Yeah. I believe you, and I don't even question it. The thing I love about America, though, nigga, we got a good military system, bro. <laughs> nigga, niggas is not fucking with us on the military shit, but when it comes to other shit like the economy and shit like that, or just architecture. Like other countries is beating us, bro. Like China, all them places, man. Um, but our military, nigga, hey, niggas not fucking with us, bro. And that's the thing I love because I feel safe here. That's all. That's all we got. We got the military. We yeah, safe. Like, nigga, Texas, you can go outside with your gun. Like, come on, bro. Yeah, like, bro. you can't do that in the UK, nigga. I used to see motherfucker, <laughs> bro. In the UK, I used to see. Bro, you done? Yeah. Keep going. In the UK, I used to see. Nigga, niggas fighting with the police, bro. Like legit. Fist fighting. Fist- Bro, fist fighting with But the, the cops police. don't even have guns over there, oh, right? Nigga, the cops ain't even got guns, dog. Nigga, and I'll be thinking like, damn, bro. I'll be looking at him like, <laughs> nigga, you know back where I'm from. Like, nigga, you would, you would get killed for that shit. Yeah. And that's a crazy thing, you know. New dude here, you swing at a cop, oh, he yeah. has the right to shoot you, oh, apparently. Yeah, he has the, he, <laughs> as he should, nigga. You, you putting his life in there. <laughs> nah, you should kill him, but you should probably tase him. You should probably tase him, you know what I'm saying? Um, Hit him with a stun gun. Yeah. And um, in China, bro, it ain't like that either. They don't even, like, they're not even violent. Um, in China, it's a little weird. I don't know, man. Yeah, China is not violent at all. But one thing I'll tell you, shout out to my older brother, nigga, because my older brother was in college when we were out there. So he'd go out partying on that shit. In China? Yeah. So I used to party, bro. Damn, this is crazy. Hey, <laughs> so in China, bro, it's no drinking age. So we was 15, 14 years old going to the club. Fucking Chinese bitches, all that bro, shit. Bro, this is a thing, bro, for oh, real? Yeah, for sure. All right, so, but this is the crazy thing about it. When you go out there and you're a foreigner, if you get into a fight with the Chinese people, and it's only maybe one or two foreigners, or you and your homeboy, all them Chinese people going to beat you up, bro. Like, for real, it's bad. So, um, yeah. Don't get in a fight yeah. in China. Don't get in a fight in China, bro, because it's going to be at least 10, 20 motherfuckers trying to beat up one or two of y'all. Yeah. All right, hold that. Oh, I'm hold getting kind of lit. I'm sorry. All right. You, you had to grab another couple beers. Last one, man. Last one, Leia. Last Let's one call it. This. this is Six Pack Podcast, and we're going through eight beers. So Goddamn. we fucked up the math on this one. Cheers. Thank you, man. 
All right, so we're talking about partying oh, yeah. in China. So party, But don't bro, get jumped. Hey, but also as well, the crazy thing, and this is like an exclusive. Man, prostitution is real, bro. And when you go out <laughs> like in these countries, hey, ain't nothing wrong with paying for some pussy. Because um, it's crazy, bro. You'll go to clubs, and it's... It's frowned upon here, but over there, I've no never, like. Is it? Yeah, no, I, I got you, bro. Over a, there, it's like it's normal, bro. It's it's a business, bro. Yes, it's a business. It's a business here too. Yeah, you can frown whatever you want to frown upon. Yeah, but so, she bad. She bad. Over there, bro, you can walk into a club and be like, "I want that." Like they 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 bring you. Say you got bottle service, they bring you like three different, four different girls, and you choose which one you want, and you can do whatever you want that night. You know, it's consensual. You can do whatever the fuck you want. So, um, I had a lot of fun times when I was overseas, bro. Like, for, dog, nigga, for real, dog. <laughs> Niggas, nigga, I ain't, start, I ain't start fucking ugly bitches until I moved to Texas, bro. Oh, God oh, yeah. damn, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I be fucking a tamale lady, bro. Like, hey, I mean, hey ass fat, the motherfucker. Bro. Hey, <laughs> I ain't got no shame in my game, bro. Oh, fuck. My bitches is ugly, but they ass is on 20. He said, I'm fucking hey. with purpose. Hey, bro. I'm Nalgas and tamales way. <laughs> hey, bro. <laughs> they going to keep you fed. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that may be the wildest shit I've ever heard of. That I've ever heard recorded. Hey, that's real shit, though. Hey, but there's nothing wrong with it, man. Like, man. like dude, but, you, but you, you're not wrong. Oh. Like, you can go... To Mexico. Oh, yeah. And, it, like, we ain't got to go all the way to China. You yeah, go to Mexico, Mexico yeah. and prostitution <laughs> is a fucking thing. Yeah. How many patients you got, motherfucker? Mm-hmm. I got 20 American dollars. <laughs> 20. Okay, come this way. <laughs> Do whatever you want, bro. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's it's not, like, because my buddy, when he goes down there, he goes, so I'll take, it'll be him, his wife, his yeah. four kids, mm. his wife's family, his family. They'll oh, go to a restaurant. Yeah. And he goes, bro, it's like $45 <laughs> to feed Everybody. everybody. And yeah. I had another buddy that went down there. He went to watch a soccer game. He was mm. in the front row. He got like 12 tickets. He was like, American dollars? Yeah. That shit was like 60 bucks. Damn. Yeah. Sitting front row at a yeah. soccer game. And I'm like, yeah. huh? Bro, why are we still here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, the cartel. My bad. I forgot. <laughs> I forgot. I didn't want to die. I be wanting... Man, I don't know. I ain't going to speak on that. I, don't, I be wanting to move to a motherfucking different... I want to build a house in a different country, man. And, but that's what, my, that's what my buddy did. Yeah. My buddy, My buddy Chico... Okay. I ain't gonna say his real. That's what I call him. Yeah. His real name I can't even pronounce mm-hmm. his last name. He's super Mexican, mm-hmm. but uh, so he has his father has land down there. Okay, his yeah. father passed away. Yeah, so he built fucking like he has like twelve foot concrete walls mm-hmm. around his property, Jeez. and then he built a house. He yeah. uh, he goes, how much you think that cost? Mm-hmm. I was like, American dollars. Mm-hmm. Like if you're gonna build that shit here, that'd be like half a mm-hmm. mil. I go, how much was it down there? He goes. Seventy five thousand. Crazy. He goes out. He I go. You built like you built like a fucking ranch that's yeah, locked in, bro. Yeah, yeah. It's some shit we would see in Desperado. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, yeah. yeah. He goes. One of my workers. He was on the second story of the house I was building. He fell off and broke his leg. They don't have workman's comp down uh, there. They don't have none of that much. shit. And the guy. He was worried the guy was gonna try to sue him uh, or something. Okay, yeah. He, he said, he goes, I, I flew down there, mm. went to the property. I was mm. like, what hospital is he in? Went there. He goes, hey, man. He's like, hey, boss, I'll be back at work tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He goes, I have a cast on my leg, but I'll be back at work. He's like, no, no, no. Just <laughs> no. Get, get get right, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Heal up right. I'll yeah. pay you for the next two weeks. Okay, yeah. Give you two weeks That's off. Good. Good. Oh, really? I appreciate it. And yeah. I was like, I'm just saying, man, like. That's crazy. He but yeah. he goes paying for next two weeks, yeah. bro. That's like one hundred and seventy five dollars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that ain't shit, bro. Like here, that's a that's at a good man. job. You can make one hundred seventy five in a day or in two. A, nigga, in a nigga, you work at what? That's one hundred seventy five. That's what nineteen, maybe eighteen an hour. Yeah, yeah, like. So I'm like, trying to man. I'm trying to. So that's my goal, man. With like, because I have a background of construction and shit. So like. <laughs> My background is being a mason. I fucking do brickwork and shit, being a bricklayer. So my goal, man, eventually, before I pass on this earth, build some houses overseas or in Mexico or in any uh, South American place. And um, because I know, nigga, it's cheap. Like, it's it is cheap. cheap, bro. All my kids is Mexican and black. <laughs> so they speak, my kids speak Spanish. Bro, I'm half white. I don't even speak Spanish, bro. I was wondering, bro, your last name Gates. 
Nah, man. Um, no, that's a funny. That's a I'm funny. That's funny that. you brought that up because. Um, all right. Oh, so no. my last name is not Gates. Mm. It's oh, something. Man, I thought it was no, no, no. Gates. But I put that shit on Instagram on purpose. Okay. Right. So I put Gates as my last name because I don't like motherfuckers knowing who I am uh, okay. or where to find me. Yeah, yeah. So if you look up <laughs> Rob Gates on the internet, that mm. motherfucker don't exist. Mm, okay. But I ran with that nickname in high school because, like, my favorite rapper. I mean, not till this day, but for the longest time was Little Flip. Okay. And Flip put out that he was like, he, I'm Flip Gates, like mm, Bill Gates. Okay, yep, 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 so I used yep. to run with that Rob mm. Gates shit. Bro, there's a lot of people that think that's my real yeah, fucking I, last I name. I legit thought. And I was like, there's some motherfuckers fuck? out here that think my last name is yeah. Gates. And, and like, my, my, that, bro, that goes back to fucking MySpace, bro. I was confused, bro. I had like, I probably had like four, four grand in 20s mm. just spread out. And my name was Rob Gates. <laughs> At MySpace, bro. Boy, I was in my MySpace, my, my MySpace URL. You could type it in mm. until they revamp MySpace. Mm. It was all about my cash for life. Wow! And you you could type that in in a browser, and my fucking picture pops up like, hey, <laughs> about four thousand dollars in my hand. <laughs> Damn, that's good shit for back then. But I mean, that was bro. But that was fucking busting my ass at a fucking uh, grocery yeah. store, yeah. saving up money. Mm. I was trying to put rims on my truck yeah. at the time. Damn. And my shit lifted, bro. Lifted. Yeah, yeah, bro. Fuck all the low rider trucks, man. I don't like that shit, bro. Bro, I used to have I had a a ninety eight Sierra mm. and it had a four six drop, but I had stock wheels on it. Mm. That motherfucker was bad. Then I started having kids, I had to get rid of it. Sheesh. I hey, so all my young niggas, hey man, before you have kids, man, make sure that girl's the right one for you, bro. You don't wanna be nothing in these bitches and be on child support and then next thing you know your fucking checks is gone. Yeah. Hey. Be safe, man. That's all I'm gonna say, bro. Strap uh, up. Yeah, go get fixed. Hey, you can, you can. If you get fixed, you can turn it around, bro. You can get that. I'm scared, bro. I want to get a, a vasectomy, bro, but I'm scared. Dog. I'm on that, bro. Like I'm. You got a vasectomy? No, I don't have one yet. Oh. But uh, that's uh, that's all that's to do list for 2023. I'm scared, bro. I'm bro, scared. I got three assholes right now. Man, shit. I got one about to be 14. I got one about to be three, and then one about to be eight. I don't need no more kids. Mm, yeah. I don't need no more. Uh, yeah. I mean. Yeah, you gotta get aged though. Yeah, that's like I don't I, like they're spread out. Yeah, I don't, I have I have a little bit of time when I can yeah. drink with each of them as they get mm -hmm. older. Yeah, dude, that's one of my that's one of my biggest things. Like me and my dad. Yeah, my dad was born in fifty four, so my dad right now is pushing seventy and some okay, change. Yeah, yeah. So me and my dad, we had a little bit a little bit of time we could drink mm -hmm. together. But not really. Like, not really drink, drink. Yeah, like, we're going to post up at the bar yeah. and shut that bitch down. We never had that. That's what me and my dad be doing. But that's what, that's how I feel about with my, my oldest mm. son. He'll be 14 in February. Mm. So I'm like, bro, we counting these fucking days <laughs> down. <laughs> counting them down. Like, we got seven years, bro. We be at the bar together. <laughs> Ew, I'm going to buy you two beers <laughs> and you finna drive me home. <laughs> Use that day. <laughs> that's crazy. No, I had a cousin. I had a cousin. He used to uh, he used to sit in the truck, bro. He turned sixteen, and he was the designated driver. Mm, he drive he drive like two or three of my deals to the bar, bro. and they'd be in the bar drunk as shit. Yeah. He'd be in the he'd be out there on his phone on YouTube, <laughs> just waiting for him to <laughs> leave. For him to leave. <laughs> and bro, I seen a meme. It was funny. It was like a. Uh, it was like when you're, it was, it was like, uh, I'm saying like they were 14, were 14 years old being a designated driver for, driving, designated driver for their dad. Yeah. I thought that was crazy. I ain't gonna lie, my parents, bro, I think one time them niggas get designated driver from the police. Look at that shit. That shit was crazy. Bro. My, my parents drink, boy. They used to. My drink. worst, my worst night. Okay, so let's, let's rewind probably about. Man, we probably gotta edit that one out. My mama <laughs> gonna see this. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you uh, you got it. I'll give a fuck. They don't pay my bills. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man. Like I, this, this one. Shout out to my mom because. Okay, so we'll rewind to last the the podcast I recorded before New Year's for 2022. Yeah. Me and my cousin, we was on this. I was I was on this health kick. Mm -hmm. Like I'm gonna lose some weight, bro. Okay. So nah, we, you buff, bro. Nah, That's bro. This this man. sweat this sweater be making you me look swole, good, bro. But uh. So we decide. I decided. <laughs> I made an executive decision. I was like, "We're gonna drink vodka on the oh. podcast." Oh shit! Okay. So we were doing double shots of vodka mm. with Lacroix and lime. Yeah. And we both had three, so that's six shots. Yeah. And then uh, I felt fine. I was mm. like, "Man, I feel good, bro." Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we did like one more drink, and then he had it. He went with his girl 
and whoever they went to the movies mm. and I ended up at Wild Pitch over here okay, on yeah. Brian Irving yeah. and I just kept drinking vodka and Sprite yeah, bro. bro I woke up alright so I woke up and this dude was punching my window and I was in White Settlement the fuck? White Settlement Lake Worth he's like White beating guy. my window like he thinks he's gonna break it with dude. his hand and I rolled the, I was like whoa 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 bro I rolled the window down he's like I'm gonna beat your ass, and I was like, "What did I do? Yeah. Well, just stay right here." He walked back to his truck, put that bitch in the drive, Arr! fucking peeled out. Man, I ran for like 15 minutes from that dude. He yeah. was hauling ass behind me, going through stop signs, red lights, whatever. <laughs> and then I got pulled under a Lake Worth Bridge. Yeah. Lake Worth PD caught up oh, with me, and uh, this rookie cop. Shout out to that rookie cop in Lake Worth. Like, <laughs> yeah. thanks for having my back, bro. <laughs> He's like, "What happened, man?" You been drinking? I was like, yeah, bro, I've been drinking. <laughs> I was drinking earlier. I was chilling out. And then I was like, I got to get to the crib. And then this fool started punching my window. He's like, where are you coming from? I was like, I don't know. Where am I? <laughs> I told that fool, I was like, man, I'm looking at these bridges. Look at this other path. I mean, am I in Waxahachie? He was like, you can he, my cousin used to live out there. The so, I, so I thought I went to his old spot. Oh, yeah, like, this shit far. And he's like, bro, you're in Lake Worth. I'm like, fuck. I was completely wrong. He's like, he goes, so what happened? I said, like, dude was punching on my window. The dude behind your squad car. He's like, I'm going to get him out of here. Just stay right here. I was like, all right. So he walked back there, told that fool he needed to leave. Yeah. And uh, he had me. So he's like, I got to ask you to step out. Yeah. Did feel sobriety, bro. And uh, that dude was my guardian angel, bro. I felt all three of those feel sobriety. Damn, bro. Did you get in trouble? I walked the line, came back, almost fell over. Damn. One leg, tried to touch my, mm. my nose with my finger. Yeah. And it didn't happen. And uh, this is not a story I'm proud about, but goddamn, it happened. And uh, he goes, "All right, man, you you look like you've been going. I've been, I've been going through a lot, bro. Yeah. Life is fucked up right now." Yeah. He goes, "All right, um, you got somebody to come get you?" Mm-hmm. I was like, "Yeah." So you lucky? He man. goes, "You got somebody to come take your truck?" I was like, "Yeah, man, I do." Yeah. He goes, "Call them." He goes, "They got twenty minutes to get here." Yeah, man, that's good. And our uh, first phone call. Mom, mom, I need you to come get me. Come get me, mom, mom. I need you to come get me. She said, "What happened?" I got pulled over. I'm gonna go to jail if you don't come get me. Come get me. Say you lucky. My mama, man, she man, she wouldn't be there. I hey, bro, my mom back in the day would not have been either. But my mom knew what I was going through and my fucking life situation. Yeah. And she pulled up. She she drove me home in my truck. My dad drove her car home. And I collapsed on the couch and slept for like three days, bro. Like, bro. Out. Dude, yeah. the next day was New Year's. I ended up, I went out to Mansfield to hang out with my family. Yeah. You drinking? Uh-uh, bro. I almost, <laughs> went, to, I almost went to prison last night, bro. <laughs> they were trying to yeah. get me for that real shit. I went to jail, bro. And I called my mama. She said, don't drop the soap. Dang, I was like, what the fuck? That's the shit my mom told me when I was in high school. <laughs> I was fighting the case, nigga. I didn't even do it. And then mama called my mom. She's like, don't drop the soap, nigga. She hung up on me. Dang. Your mama, she riding for you. I yeah, man, my mom, my mom always got my back. Fuck that shit. Mom would go to the bar for a little bit. You watch the kids. You better be home before fucking two. Don't be before two. All right, mom. I love you, mom. I'll be back. <laughs> That's crazy. Mom, what should I do about talking to these crazy ass females? Are you in a relationship? No. All right, well, you're in a relationship. You do what you're gonna do. Mom will be giving me some fucking harsh advice. Yeah. That's what you need, man. Sometimes, and man. Hey, I ain't mad about it either. Like, she been there for me through all my bullshit, That's so. Good, man. man, shout out to my mama, though. I love my mama to death. Damn, bro. How much time we got? Shit, I don't know, man. There's not really, like, a oh, you know, set time. no time, man. I like talking to you, shit. We now, talk. we keep talking, man. Um, I don't I don't really else? think I need to drink any more beers. Oh, though. yeah, I'm good. <laughs> I just enjoyed the conversation. Um, man, it's like therapy, bro. No, bro. dude, that's what I tell people. Like, okay, here's my here's here's my mental health plug. Like, dude, every podcast I always try to bring up mental health, yeah. no matter who's on the podcast hey. with me, who I'm talking to. Like, bro, what man. what are your experiences, man? Like, how do you deal mental with health. the mental shit we have to deal with in everyday life? All right, bro. So I'm gonna get personal. I don't give a fuck. You know what I'm right, this man. could be the most realest podcast. And I touched base on this in my fucking album, man. It's sex addiction, bro. Us men, bro, like, believe it yeah, or not, bro. bro. Like, a lot of us, bro, we we deal with sex addiction at the end of the day. Nigga, I deal with sex addiction. I be fucking hoes, nigga. Like, <laughs> nigga, I be fucking bitches. Like, <laughs> nigga. And, like, 
nigga, you know what I'm saying? I, I didn't fuck my family up because of that shit, you know what I'm saying? And, yeah. um, that shit sucks, you know what I'm saying? And um, that's something I got to work on, man, because, like, nigga, you know what I'm saying? Having multiple bitches and all that shit, that shit ain't cool, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, so yeah, addiction, bro. I'm sorry, I'm getting on topic. Nah, you good, addiction, man. man um, how I deal with it, bro. Or just therapy, I don't know, what the fuck. Not music. music. I write music, you know what I'm saying? And um, I talk to my mm. mom. Yeah. And um, I try to have sexual discipline. That's what I'm talking about, the sex addiction. Nigga, I deal with sex addiction. I ain't gonna lie to you. But it ain't nothing like crazy. I don't be fucking prostitution or shit. Yeah. But I'm, I, mean, I mean, I be having multiple bitches sometimes. I've I've been known in my past to fuck around and have just be bitch here, bitch here, bitch here. And I don't care. You put this shit out. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> um, it ain't known. It ain't unknown. But, um, so, damn, where the fuck I'm going? But, um, I've just been trying to be a better man, man. Better man for my kids. Think about women. Respect women a lot more than before. Not playing with their feelings. Um, shit like that. And I deal with it just by putting it in my music, man. And yeah. that's the thing about me, bro. Like, one of my favorite artists is Freddie Gibbs. I don't know you know Freddie Gibbs is? You don't know Freddie Gibbs? We're gonna, I'm going to find out after this podcast. Apparently. You got to look at Freddie Gibbs. <laughs> All right, so I like to just put my experiences in my music, man, because can't nobody talk shit about me. Nigga, I put it in my music. Nigga, I talk, I talk about how I deal with this, I deal with that, I deal with... I deal with yeah. Like, my life ain't perfect, bro, you know what I'm saying? Like, I might look cool as fuck on social media, bro, but, like, listen to my music. Like, bitches be like... Oh, you act like you got all this money and your life is just perfect. Nah, bitch. Listen to my music. I talk about it. You know I talk about how I had issues with my baby mama. I talk about how I'm trying to be a better man. You know what I'm saying? Shit like that. So nobody can never talk shit about me or say nothing because I talk about it in my music. Can't yeah. nobody say, Eric, be capping. Nigga, I talk about my music. I didn't been broke before. I yeah. talk about my music. I didn't have money. I talk Dude, about that was the, one of the tracks on the sessions. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> we good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I was just making sure we're still recording. Yeah, yeah. Like I talk, I talk, man. I I use music as a, it's an outlet. It's an outlet, bro. Yeah, man. Because at the end of the day, bro, this is what helps me. This is therapeutic for me. This is my therapy. Because at the end of the day, nigga, like a lot of us, we can't even afford to go talk to a therapist. Dude, bro. therapy is so fucking expensive. Bro. Expensive than no bitch. And the thing is, I like about myself though, like I don't do drugs or no shit. Yeah. But I have my own addictions. Uh-huh. I like fucking bitches. I ain't gonna lie to you. It is what it is. It is what it uh, is. And, but I'm trying to work on that. You know what I'm saying? Because I realized, like, man, you only gonna keep going in the fucking roller coaster down, down, down. You're gonna be playing with women's feelings. Um, so I'm just trying to be a better man and um, just make more music, man. That's it. And just respect women more, you know? It's like, yeah, that's it. And not not saying I disrespect women. It's just more so like the feelings, like being being honest with a female. Like you can tell a bitch, like, "Hey, I like you, but hey, I got another bitch." Yeah, me, nigga, I'm the type of nigga back in the day, nigga. I, oh, I like you a lot. I like you. Yeah, I really like. I ain't talking to no other girls. Nigga, I got hella bitches. <laughs> you know what I'm so, so I'm trying to be a better man nah, and just being yeah, more honest yeah. with me. And I ain't trying to get like super deep, but yeah, yeah, like. I ain't gonna lie, bro. Right where I'm at right now. Yeah. Um. I I had I got an ex. Yeah. That was I mean, babe, mama's over there in the other room. Yeah. But I got an ex girlfriend. And like I was like, all caught up, bro. Mm-hmm. And I I mean I still talk to her. Yeah. And we we still hang out and we go out for drinks and shit. But yeah. Um, like I told myself, all right, man, we're going to the new year. Mm. I ain't talking to no females. Yeah. Until after February. <laughs> after I ain't because I, I told myself I was like, I ain't buying no Christmas presents. Yeah. I ain't taking you nowhere for New Year's. Mm. I ain't buying you no Valentine's bullshit. Mm. Like I'm I'm setting myself up cognitively yeah. money wise that yeah. in March, maybe I start talking to a girl. Mm. But my baby, he turns three in March, mm. so focus is on him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then my and in February, my my older son, he'll turn Damn, that fool will be 14. Damn. So, like, I'm over here like, nah, I'm, I ain't trying to talk to no girls yeah. till, yeah. until all that shit's out the way. Yeah. And it sucks, dude, because every time I meet a girl, I'm like, man, I feel like I can really talk to this yeah. chick. But at the same time, it's like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. 
But I mean that, like, dude, that's just because of my history. Like yeah. I, like I was in a marriage for thirteen years. That's crazy. So you go thirteen years, and then like the the smallest sign of anything, man, fuck this shit. <laughs> like, I ain't trying to do that shit again. So what's your advice on marriage, man? Like what? Because I want to. I, I, mean, I kind of want to get married this year. You got a girl you ready to marry? Nigga, I'm, man, I look at, I might as well marry one of my baby mamas, bro. That's how I look at it, bro. Like, like I'm honestly, bro, so like, there's there's nothing marriage? wrong, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Like, I, I, I'll be 100% honest, like, if you're happy, like, if one of your baby mamas makes you happy, that that's, that's what matters. Mm. Like, she has to know the real you. Yeah. And she has to accept the real you. Mm. And if she can deal with the real you, and you can deal with the real her, mm. then do it. Yeah. But, like, I got married way too young, yeah, bro. Okay. I got married mm. when I, man, I couldn't grow a full beard. I could barely have a little bit of chin <laughs> hair back then. I was, uh, I was fucking 19. Sheesh. And she was 18. So, oh, like, okay. we were just, like, yeah. honestly, bro, it was, like, a lot of pressure from the church mm-hmm. that we were in. Okay. Like, oh, you need to be right with God and all this. <laughs> and I was, like, I am not a very uh, Christian man mm-hmm. anymore. Yeah. And, uh. <laughs> If, if religion is your thing, I'm not knocking it. I'm just yeah. saying it ain't for me. Yeah. And uh, is there a higher power? Oh, Clearly, that motherfucker yeah. be watching out for me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I don't know if uh, I don't know what to call him. I don't know how to embrace him. Mm. So I'm not gonna sit here and speak on him. Yeah, yeah. Me and my cousin like to call him the Watcher. The Watcher. Yeah, we watch that. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's all we like to call him. That. <laughs> He's like, there is some fool in some other dimension <laughs> looking out for some people. <laughs> Watching you, you but but is. honestly, I feel like that's what it is, dude. Yeah. Like, like if if you can be happy with someone at their worst of times, mm-hmm. and they can be happy with you at your worst of times, yeah. and then hey man, go try to make it happen. Yeah. But if if you're with somebody and they're like, oh, you need to work on this, you need to work on that. Look, mm-hmm. I'm a grown ass man, mm-hmm. and this is probably who I'm going to be for a hot minute. <laughs> and maybe in my old age, I change. Yeah. yeah. But this is where we are, and if you don't like me. Mm-hmm. That don't say yes when I give you a ring. Yeah. So, and that's how I feel about it. Like, yeah, I mean, 13 years when I was younger, we had good times. We had some bad times. We got yeah. three kids out of it. Yeah. But honestly, if if you if, if they make you happy and you make them happy, mm-hmm. like, 90% of the time, yeah. then I say go for it. Yeah. If you happy 50-50, fuck off. Mm. It's not worth it. <laughs> it's not worth it for to be happy like yeah. three and a half days out yeah, of the week. Yeah, if you feel to be happy on Monday, Tuesday, and half a Wednesday, <laughs> fuck off. Like, there's no point. Like, don't even yeah. try. Yeah, I see. But I, but I do hear from a lot of uh, married, newly married couples. Well, she used to be cool when I did this before. I was like, yeah, bro, but you married now. Yeah. Oh, she used to, she used to she wouldn't trip before. Mm. Yeah, but you married, bro. Mm. Like y'all vested. Yeah. Y'all, y'all's money's together. Y'all mm. got a house. Y'all got cars. Y'all got yeah. kids. Yeah. And yeah, that's just that's just tough, bro. Like, yeah. like honestly, like I, the the best advice anyone's ever said about getting married was in fucking Big Daddy, when Adam <laughs> Sandler and his buddy was about to propose. He goes, "You're not proposing, are you?" And he goes, yeah, yeah, buddy, I am. He goes, well, think about it. <laughs> like, it's not just a, I, I feel like people think that it's just something to do. Okay, yeah. Like, it's just that point in life where I don't want to be alone anymore. Mm. And I want someone to come home to. Mm. But just remember, you're not alone anymore. Mm. There's someone to come home to. So you can't just do your own shit whenever you feel like it. Yeah. You can't just... Fuck it, I'm going to go on a bender for three days, mm-hmm. and I'll call into work, and it'll be good. Like, do you have to answer, like, where the fuck have you been at? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, I'm I'm not against marriage at all. Like, because I, I, I do see myself one day being married again. Yeah. I just don't know uh, how soon that yeah. will be. That's cool, man. I want to get married one day, man, because I feel like, I guess a cycle, bro. I'm gonna keep chasing big booty bitches. And that's like, that's I true. I just need to settle down with that one instead of keep chasing and chasing. That's how I look at it, man. It's like, nigga, you can keep chasing and chasing and chasing and chasing and chasing. The problem is when you're chasing and you're at 55, 60, Ooh. 
move. So and yeah, you and you move. and you chasing uh, twenty seven, mm. thirty two. Mm. Like, I ain't gonna lie, bro. Men age like fine wine. Mm. Like, you stay in the gym, yeah. you get a little salt and pepper in your hair, yeah, you, you yeah. take care of yourself, yeah, you can yeah. still look, you can still, uh, <laughs> men can still look good in their 60s. Yeah, yeah. But you finna be chasing after a woman that's gonna be in her mid to yeah. late 30s, yeah. 40s, yeah. and there ain't nothing wrong with that. But just know she's coming after that 401, bro. Yeah, that 401K. <laughs> that's what she's there for. <laughs> That's crazy. And if you ain't got plans for it, then yeah, cool. Oh, man. This shit is therapeutic. We hear it, man, on the podcast, man. Dude, honestly, bro, like, I record myself sometimes just in this room talking, <laughs> talking shit to myself. And that's my therapy, bro. Yeah, nah, yeah. Because I'll listen to myself back and say, you being a bitch, bro. Fuck that shit. Don't be worrying about that. Crazy. You got that figured out. You can you can figure that out in no time, bro. Yeah. Don't, don't be sweating that. But yeah. I'll, I'll do that shit. I'll record myself and listen to myself, bitch. <laughs> It's like, bro, you acting like a bitch, bro. Sometimes it be like, like you, you sweating some dumb shit. Man, so who you? I got questions for you, bro. All right, man, let's go. So who you listening to? Who do you listen to, man? What show musically influences? Bro, like back in the day, like the shit that I really banged, like SPM, con- controversial SPM. <laughs> hey, uh, <laughs> hey, I don't know. I would be man, fuck this show, go fuck. I don't know how I feel about SPM, bro. This nigga was fucking impregnated a thirteen. That's what. Uh, th- that's what I'm saying, bro. Like that was, but yeah, that was my yeah. like. That was like honestly, bro. That was like fifth and sixth grade <laughs> yeah, music. He was fucking a was, thirteen year old bitch. Bro, and they're and they're like, and he bro. swears up and down. Nah, that was a lie. Blah blah. Nigga, blah. hey, nah, he knew what it was. And, and look, like man. I'm, I'm not the judge, jury, and executioner. <laughs> man, that nigga knew he was fucking the thirteen year old bitch. And that's that. <sighs> hey, but but okay. So outside of SPM, R. Kelly wrong too though. But it's okay, <laughs> bro. I'm a fan of Golden Showers though. I don't want them, but I will give them. <laughs> R. Kelly, that nigga though. <laughs> <laughs> but bro, who else is here? Yeah, uh, musical influence. Yeah. Like from back in the day, like I, I used to bang a lot of Eminem. Okay, and then uh, man, UGK. Okay. Uh, Little Flip. Yeah. That whole Houston rap scene yeah. was like a big eye opening scene for me because it kind of showed me like, man, somebody from Texas can get yeah, on, bro. Yeah. Like, that it's means. not all about fucking New York and yeah. fucking East Coast West Coast bullshit. Yeah. Like, we just third coast and <laughs> DJ Screws over here chopping and screwing shit, and everybody's yeah. all fucked up jamming yeah. this shit. Yeah. So, a lot of that, like Three Six Mafia back in the day. Yeah. Um, Fuck, uh, bro, I used to fucking bang the Trick Daddy. Some of the Trick Daddy's trick old daddy, shit, bro. Yeah. <laughs> like, I ain't gonna lie, bro. That's that. Honestly, bro, like that's what I hear. Like, yeah. when I hear Glorilla. Okay, yeah. yeah. I hear that Trick Daddy uh, vibe yeah, like that. Right. Like, that's what I hear, bro. And yeah. I'm not mad about it. Yeah, not hell no. Nah. And, uh, like, man, I ain't gonna lie. Man, I bring some T-Pain back in the T-Pain. day. Like, fucking bartender yeah, and shit no, like man, that. Shit was a shit I'm in love with a stripper. Fuck. Yeah, bro. Like, a lot of that music from back in the day was just like, oh, yeah, man. Yeah. Um, fucking Too Short, too Shake short. That Monkey, shit yeah, like that. I'm like, there's some music back that, like, there's some music vibes that were going on back then that we don't have anything to compare to mm-hmm. now. No, no, sure not. Like, everything's everything's become, I ain't gonna lie, fucking Drake. Yeah. And, <laughs> like, Lil Wayne to put something out occasionally. Yeah. Like, I, like I'm not mad at ASAP Rocky. I like ASAP Rocky yeah. stuff. I love yeah. that fool's whiskey. You ever had his whiskey? Never had his whiskey. Mercer and know. Prince. Oh, dude, it bro, whiskey. it's ba- It's fucking smooth as fuck. Yeah. Okay, it's smooth. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I got. I got. I'll show you the bottle. My son kept the bottle because he thought it was cool as fuck. Shit, man. But uh, yeah, man. Like, like I, I, I do. I, I love fucking Tower the Creator. Tyler, really? Like I listen. Like my you son. Old showed, shit or his new shit. Did Both, bro. Like my son was like, "Hey, check this out," and I'll be yeah, like, yeah. "Oh no, I I I like this." Yeah, yeah, yeah. but but uh, uh, some of it is too. Like it's something that I haven't heard. Okay, and like I'm not opposed to new music, mm-hmm. and that's why like when the Fort Worth rap scene, like I started with Lou Charles and I went to mm-hmm. Joe, and then you're featured on Joe stuff with yeah, Milky yeah, Beats, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then get into the dank stuff and then the session stuff. It's like, bro, there's so much music here man, that no one's exposed to. Bro, the way I look at, man, Fort Worth music, bro, it's like a hidden gem, bro. Like, um, like there's a lot of dope artists in this area 
But the way I look at it is like, nigga, you gotta go look for that shit. Exactly. You like it's it, not you're not gonna find it at a record shop. Yeah, you're you, not. Yeah. You gotta be at the right place at the right time, like yeah. I was when I met Joe. Exactly. You and then be. just you start running into people, yeah. you start hearing it, like what the fuck? And then you be like, damn, what the fuck? Like this shit is dope. And then like, yeah, like I tell people, man, it's a hidden gem, bro. You gotta, you gotta do your research. It's just not gonna be popped in your face. You know what I'm saying? You got to go out here and actually be like, oh, shit, yo. Because, like, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of rappers from Fort Worth. Dude, I grew up in Eastside. Yeah. I know the Stop 6 crew. Uh, I know, like, I uh, know I know how some uh, of that goes down. And a lot of it is that that street murder rap. And... Ooh, can I speak on this topic? Go. All right. Yeah, we talking, talking. Like, bro, back when I was coming up, bro, like... Venues wouldn't book us. Yeah. Because, or at least for me, it'd be hard, bro, because niggas used to think we was like, go, yeah, yeah. And I'm not, like, I'm, I I haven't been on the scene for, like, year, year, 10, 20 plus years or whatever. But I remember coming up, bro, like, niggas would think, we, like, <coughs> we and nothing's wrong with that, but they think we would, like, go, yeah, yo, and all the murder, whatever, whatever, cool. Um, and it'd be hard for us to book shows. And then once we actually start booking shows, they'd be like, oh, like, the these venue owners, they'd be like, oh, shit. We can do a show. They, we can book these artists, and they're not. We can book a JLE. We can look, book, book a Lou Charles, and ain't shit going to happen. Ain't nobody going to get killed. Exactly, ain't bro. Get beat up. And I, I think that's where, like, yeah. bro, I was here for the 90s, for the murder worst. Yeah, yeah. I was here for yeah. all that shit, bro. I remember there was a quick sack down the street from the apartments that we lived yeah. at on Brentwood's there. And my dad went in. Mm. He came out with my drink and his drink, mm. and a cop got shot as soon as mm. he walked out. In the back of the head. That's crazy. And that was, dude, it was murder. Like, I just yeah. remember street fights at nighttime. Mm-hmm. They had automatic weapons and dudes See? brawling in the yeah. crowd. And it's like, <laughs> all right, crazy. close the blinds and go to bed. <laughs> and, like, there was, I, I, I remember I remember that yeah. stuff. And, like, I had buddies when I grew up. And they were like, yeah, man, Murderworth was different back mm-hmm. in the day. And I was like, and I had, I had a buddy named Bernard. Yeah. He did time in Houston. Mm-hmm. Okay. And he, he linked up with his celly, and he was like, yeah. yeah, man, I told him where I was from, and he told me where he was from. Yeah. And uh, we just kind of had each other's backs. Okay, that's good. And he was like, he knew I was from up here, and most of the dudes down there were from down yeah, there. Okay. But he had my back, and yeah. I was like, damn, bro. Yeah. Like, sometimes, you, I mean, you just never know. Yeah. And, and like, a lot of these rappers that are coming out now claiming murder work and stuff, yeah. like, I'm not knocking you. I, like, yeah. Like you want to claim it, claim it. Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, like we not there no more. Nah, we're nah, not. We're not. not murder. Murder capital. Of the United States. <laughs> yeah, nah. Like people ain't getting <laughs> killed like they used to be. Yeah. Like, and I remember when it was that bad. Like the, there was a cop that got killed at uh, Oakland Park. Oh, okay. And uh, I actually know his brother oh, in real life. Like I know yeah, that dude. Yeah. He was like my brother got shot at that park, and I was like, "You're that dude's brother?" Mm. He was like, "Yeah." And he goes, I was a Fort Worth police officer for 27 years. Yeah. And then we knew, I knew two other P, Fort Worth PD cops. And they were like, in the 90s, bro, it was different. Like, there was some calls that it was just like, it was hit or miss. Like, if we show up, we're probably going to get shot. Yeah, that's and, scary. I mean, they still went, but yeah. they but they were guns drawn before yeah, they showed yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. Because that's, that's what it was back then, dude. Yeah. Like, a lot of people were getting killed. Yeah. And it was like. So that's what, like, the name Murderworth, and, like, I know, like, uh, for Stepco, and uh, I know OG Tropicana uses that. But, I mean, if you were here through it, like, man. But, bro, I was never a gangbanger, bro. Yeah, nah. I, I was never related. <laughs> I, I had a buddy in high school, and he's like, Where you from, bro? And my black buddy, Darren. I was like, He's like, Where you from? I go, I grew up on Brent was there and John T. White. Oh, you Eastwood, homie? I got you. I was like, I was like, all right, man. man. He goes, if anybody ever messes with you, just tell them that Darren got you. I was like, all right, bro. I think all that gang shit is stupid in a motherfucker. Hey, bro. Like, I think it's stupid, man. Um, Cause at the end of the day, a lot of these niggas like it ain't they ain't really living like that, man. Like, like you say, it's different now. It's different now. So, but I feel like yeah, like you, you older than me, obviously. I'm sure. Like How you, you, you I'm 28 or 27. Well, I'm 33. Sorry, okay. six oh, years. you ain't too old. I ain't okay. too old, bro. But you lived through the shit. Yeah, I ain't, I ain't never like. I ain't, man. I ain't. Like I still, I still, I still roll up over there sometimes the east side just to <laughs> hey, see, nigga, just to I, see how it bro, is. I would never be on the east side of Fort Worth. 
Like, I have no reason to be over there. Like, zero. Like, what What am I going to do be over there? I still post up over there occasionally. I go to Stormy's. You ever been to Stormy's? It's a soulful place. Um, nope, I ain't never been there. Yeah. Nah, that's the only time I've ever been on the east side. But I heard stories about it, man. And uh, I just know not to go over there. Because, I mean, I'm not. It ain't, it ain't like it was at all no more. Yeah. Like, I mean, there, I, I guarantee you there's there's a couple quarter blocks you probably don't want to post up oh, at yeah, or hang out sure. at, but that's any city, bro. Yeah, that's that's, that's town. anywhere. I'm, so like, I'm originally from Cincinnati, Ohio. Man, like, in the Midwest. It's, and that's why I be trying to tell Dank. The nigga be trying to play me. Oh, my God. Nigga be trying to play me. Like, oh. like, he just be trying to play me. Nigga, I'm from the Midwest. That shit was like, it's like Chicago, nigga. Like, yeah. it's, it's dirty. Like, Michigan, Detroit. Dirt. Like Texas, like it's cool, nigga. Midwest, dirty, like crackheads, like white people, black people, everybody's on drugs, man. And um, yeah, it's just it's just dirty. So, but I'm happy I moved out of. That's the thing. I'm blessed. I got to experience the world, man. Yeah, I man. Get to move out Dude, of there's shit. people that'll never get to experience that. Never. And like I, you got to live, bro. Bro, I and this this is what I be trying to tell people, bro. It's like. You bought some Jordans for, um, I don't know. You say you bought some shoes for seven hundred dollars, nigga. You can go catch a plane to the UK to London for six hundred dollars, and there you go. You got a fucking experience. You know what I'm saying, you can, yeah, dude. Nigga. Like that's one thing. Like like I left Texas a few times. Yeah, I went to I went to New Orleans, <laughs> but that's cool. So I went man, on a cruise, and see, I so I got to hit some. Man. Some uh, I hit Mexico and I hit the Cayman Islands and I hit uh, Jamaica. Some niggas don't leave a fucking city, bro. Oh, hey, <laughs> for sure, <laughs> like, man. There's a whole world out there, like, bro. Some and they, like they say, I, bro. And it's crazy being here. It's some people from Fort Worth that never go to Dallas. It's some people from Dallas that never go to Fort Worth. No, nah, that's crazy. That bro. is crazy to me. Like there's some shows in Dallas I want to go to. Yeah, like, <laughs> bro, like and the world is much. Bigger dude, than o- you dude, Oklahoma like, is a whole nother world. I never been to Windstar, whatever the fuck it's called. I mean, Man, fuck Windstar, bro. It's too expensive. Wow, okay. Like, but been. you can go to like so. I've I've gone to Broken Bow and like Beaver's yeah. Bend a couple of times. Got okay. an Airbnb up there. Gone yeah. up there for a weekend. Yeah. Found the hole in the wall bars. Okay. Found the breweries. Yeah. Met people. Yeah. Hung out with people. Yeah. And like, it's a whole different like pace up there. Oh, okay. People yeah, act I'm different. Home. People, it's just chill, bro. bro. Hey, I, man, I bro, I tell a quick story. Nigga, I had, I had a job in Oklahoma, bro. I was doing some construction. What the fuck? I was building some shit. Um, I had a project up there. And it was a whole bunch of meth heads, bro. It was a whole bunch of crackheads. Bro, that's everywhere, bro. Oh, nigga. <laughs> this, this was bad. Oklahoma got some crackheads, bro. Well, I mean, I was, I'm sure, like, bro, there's nah, still, there's still good. like, major cities up I there that have. Nigga, I, bro, <laughs> this was, nigga, I went to the Walmart. Every fucking person, like, they were on meth, bro. Oh dang! Nigga, you go here. I mean, I don't want to go to that town. What's, where were it you was, at? Uh, Muskogee. Oh, That's okay. Shit, I ain't never been there. I had a job out there, bro. That yeah, and then I left because these niggas was doing some shit. I was like, I'm man. out. I was like, yeah, this shit was trash because, like, bro, like, I was working and I thought, like, you know, traveling for work would be fun. Nigga, I miss my family. Like, I was in that hotel jacking off. Nigga, I was like, I miss my family. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? Hey, this re- working out of town shit ain't cool. Yeah, no, nah, bro. I miss my baby, bro. I need to go home and see my girl, man. Like, yeah. dang it. But yeah, I mean, bro, what, man? I don't know how much time we got, but nigga, why niggas, bro, where I'm from, niggas be doing heroin. Why in Fort Worth niggas be doing meth? What's up with that, man? I guess it's easier to find here. Really? Okay. I, I don't know wondering. anybody who does heroin on a regular basis here. I, I, I could name. I, bro. I, I mean, I could name probably like four people that I know that that, that do meth, right? right? Bro, I know a meth dealer here. Bro, nigga, it's a fucking meth lab on Ray Street. Y'all don't know that, though. Mm, it's a man. meth lab. I, I don't, I'm, I'm not going to. I'm, I'm going to agree bro, with you 100%. Nigga, like when I came here, bro, I used to fuck with a lot of like bitches that, um... Their ex husbands was like good people, and then they fucking turned to meth heads. And I was always curious. The like, ex husband or them? Bro, the ex husband. No, nigga, don't fuck oh. with crackheads. Nigga, <laughs> <laughs> the fuck. I'm talking about nigga. They left their husbands because they were meth heads, but these were like functioning people, and then they be turned meth heads. And I was like, damn, that's crazy. Like, how do you like? 
just get on meth and I mean I don't know if you you ain't never did meth. I ain't never done meth, bro. Dude, the close yeah. I mean, I smoked some weed, bro, and then like I had some weed lace with some shit, but I ain't never done no meth, yeah, bro. No, I, don't think it's a- I always I always was curious, bro, cuz I'm from up north originally. So I'd be like, "Damn, like cuz I ain't never heard of meth up north. Nigga, niggas do heroin." But it's crazy because, like, they didn't give a fuck when black people was doing that shit. But once white people started fucking, fucking with that shit, and they started fucking that shit up, they want to start, yo, we need to put a war on drugs and all that <laughs> shit. dumb ass shit. The war on drugs. Nigga. Bro, there's been a war on drugs for years, and the war on drugs will never stop because you know what happens when you when you knock out one drug, we find a new Another, one. The fentanyl shit. Bro. Bro, fentanyl <laughs> should not exist, bro. <laughs> That drug is too strong for any purpose. Bro. It should not exist. Dang it. It's a little extreme. It's an X-rated fucking podcast. I'm gonna <laughs> fuck, nigga. Bro, I was at what the fuck? I was doing some community service, bro. And this nigga was like, like you know when they fucking stand up, like they're sitting down. Yo, this nigga was fucked up, bro. <laughs> nigga, I was at the Tarrant County Jail doing community service, bro. And this nigga was fucked up on Vietnam, bro. And it was sad. Stay away from fentanyl. That shit yeah, is man. good, man. Hey, hey, stay away from coke right now because they're cutting that shit with fentanyl right now. I ain't gonna now. lie, So bro. stay away from cocaine right man, now. Man, Don't ask me how I know these things, but I know these things. <laughs> man, I work with these Mexican dudes, man. They cool than a motherfucker, but they be selling fucking coke on the fucking job site. Them niggas be working all day. Do a coke line, working all day. They're they, the homies. They be at the crib drinking Modelo's man. and they gotta wake up the next day. That shit, man, them niggas work hard, though, bro. That's, hey, I ain't gonna lie. This is off the podcast shit. <laughs> hey, I got a nine to five, bro. At the end of the day, I got me a trade. I went to school. I went to college, all that shit. And I got me a trade in construction, masonry, whatever. These niggas I work with, they work, bro. Like, that's one thing working with Mexican people, bro. Like, nigga, I value the, like, the work hard, nigga. Like, yeah. you gotta work smarter, not harder. But, like, these niggas work. And, like, the dudes I work with, like, Nigga, they ain't the most faithful men, but nigga, they got houses. Like, yeah. they got a wife in the house. They not the most faithful men, but they got houses. All right? And that's how I want to be. You know what I'm saying? I want to have a fucking house. I want to be faithful to my wife or whatever, but nigga, I want to have, like, properties and shit. Yeah. And shit like that. So, working with Hispanic people, bro, mixing whatever the term. Nigga, they taught me to work hard. Because I ain't going to lie. As a black man, it's a little controversial. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of us niggas is lazy, bro. A lot of us niggas bro, is lazy. Yeah, it's a little controversial. I don't give a fuck, bro. A lot of us niggas is lazy. And uh, I'm, I'm going to say that as a black man, a lot of us black people are lazy and we need to stop fucking um, nigga thinking people owe us shit. Don't nobody owe us shit. Fuck slavery, all that shit. My great great grandma was a slave, nigga. And I still bust my ass and I don't work. I don't expect shit from nobody and I go out and I work. Um, that's controversial. I don't give a fuck. But I'm black. Nigga, nigga, stop being lazy. Get off your ass and get a job. You can go out here and work in construction and make 51 plus K a year and for provide for your family. And that's, conver- that, that's you ain't got to say shit. That's <laughs> controversial. I said that. But uh, shout out to all my Mexican niggas, man, because they, they, they really taught me how to work hard. And they teach me Spanish. See? Man, I need to start, I need to start hanging out with the Mexican dudes at work so I can learn Spanish. Damn, you don't know Spanish at all. I don't know Spanish at all, Poquito bro. Espanol. Nope. Damn, bro. Bienvenidos a la Six Pack Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, this is an X rated podcast. <laughs> hey, man. Nah, bro, like, I know some Spanish, like, but it's not like I could have a conversation and shit. Man. Like, I could order some tacos and some beers and shit, and, like, man. maybe some small talk, but after that, it's like, I right, bro, you got to speak in English now because I don't know the rest of it. Man, yeah, I'll be at work, bro. Them niggas look at me like, the niggas be racist to me, low key, bro. <laughs> At first, yo, man, this is an X rated podcast. I don't give a fuck. Bro, these niggas be, be bro, they, cause, it's fucked. I don't even want to call this race shit, but, man, I go to work sometimes, bro, and they be like, oh, it's another black guy. Lazy. <laughs> <laughs> bro, bro. And then, like, oh, shit. You work hard for a black guy. And I'm like, niggas, like, not all us black people are the same. <laughs> not everybody's like that, but, like, I, that's the shit I they, gotta they do. They stereotype me. Bro, stereotype me like a motherfucker. I shouldn't even be talking about work because I'm a rapper. But, nigga, I got other incomes, too. Hey. But, um, yeah, bro, they be treating me a little weird at first. And then after a while, they're like, oh, shit, come have, come have tacos with us in my truck or on my truck or whatever in the back. Man, shit crazy, bro. But um, shout out to all the 
all the homies, man. All the construction people. Like I said, I have a, a trade in construction, so if you need something built, I'll let your boy. Um, I need some concrete, like. Damn, bro, this is an X-rated podcast. <laughs> <laughs> nah, bro, I've been on some. I've been on some more fucked up shit than what we talked about. All right, I'll I've been on the bad, podcast. Bro. We were talking about eating ass and like a right. girl gripping my ass cheeks. Eating shit. ass. All right, so let's talk about eating ass. <laughs> hey, bro, I love fucking big Mexican women, bro. Like. It's something about an ass, bro. I'll like, make that into a reel and put that on your Tinder account. Hey, man. It is what it is, bro. Like, Brandon had some big asses before, bro. Like, <laughs> huge, bro. Like, nigga. Um, shout out to my nigga, Dang 817 He don't like big girls no more. But I love big women, man. What type of women you like, bro? I'm going to be honest. And I've been honest on, a, on another podcast and on this one. Mm. I like a woman that can dress up. Like, you can dress up, and you can put the heels on in a dress, okay. so we can go out to a nice dinner. Yeah. But you can also uh, not put no makeup on, throw a t-shirt and some booty shorts on, and we can go watch a game at Hooters or some shit. Okay. Like, I, I want that diverse female that can fit in uh, multiple crowds. Mm. Like, um, that you can hold your own in a conversation. Okay. Like, I ain't got to babysit you all night. Yeah. Like, you going to make some friends while I'm over mm. here networking. Mm. Like I want you want to be in a conversation with me. Yeah. Oh, cool. That's cool. Yeah. But if you can't keep up with the conversation, that you ain't gonna be tripping over there mm. on the side. Like he ain't paying attention to me. Yeah. Bitch, I got shit to do. Like I'm trying to meet people. I'm trying right. to make some shit happen. I, like I'm not over here. I, I don't want to. I don't want to babysit nobody. So let me say something on that. <laughs> hey, I'm sorry, y'all. I gotta. I gotta cut my man off. If you go, if you gonna date. A rapper, an entrepreneur, somebody like that. You got to understand when he invites you to these events, you got to play the side sometimes. And you can't be jealous if I go network with somebody and I can't give you all of my attention. This is the main reason why I don't invite girls that I'm talking to or a girl I'm dating. I don't invite them to the shows. Whenever I go do a show, I'm there to do a job. I'm not there to fucking cater to you. Cater to you. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. I got to go talk to people. I got to go talk to this girl that's a promoter or whatever and she might think I'm attractive Yeah. but guess what hey it is what it is I gotta network whatever yeah. man I had girls bro I invite to the shows bro the motherfuckers mad then the motherfucker over here mad as shit you know what I'm saying That's, like, and yeah yeah like I learned I learned that doing this man. meeting some of the people that I met I went to a, an event yeah. and it uh it turned into a whole nother thing bro and I was like that's the last time yeah it's the last time first time last time yep yeah. So I, don't, I won't even fuck with it no more. That's so why I don't invite bitches. I don't, all right, I, I don't invite women that I date to the shows, and I don't fuck my groupies. Never fuck your supporters. You can keep this in the real. Never have sex with your supporters. And the reason why you don't have sex with your supporters is because they fuck. Like, that, that fucks up your money. If you got a girl yeah. that loves you, bro, like, oh, my God, I'm such a fan, and she paying that $10 to your shows, and she paying that $50 for your merch, I got an Eric Evans t-shirt on right now. Chill some merch. And once you fuck her, oh yeah, it's done. She ain't gonna buy none of your fucking merch, none of your shows, shit like that. So don't fuck your supporters to all the young artists coming up. Don't fuck your supporters. Be like me and fuck the tamale lady. The tamale lady. <laughs> tamale ladies be thick, bro. I, but you think I'm joking. <laughs> If the tamales are good, they're thick. Hey, they thick than a motherfucker, right? Don't speak. Hey, hey, that's enough, man. <laughs> Let me stop. I'll be on cheese spot, bro. All right, spot? all right, man. Yeah, Hold on. Let's know. let's kill this. We'll talk more. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Um. I'm all right. Like, so you got the okay. album. Yeah. February fourth. Damn. February fourth. Strictly independent. My album is dropping. Yeah. And then we're gonna do. We're gonna. I'm plotting on a tour right now. We're gonna do shows international, not international. We're gonna do shows in L. A. Denver. Fort Worth and probably Dallas. Big shows. All right, man. All right, so we're gonna call this one oh, because yeah. uh, your boys got to piss again. Oh yeah. And we done we done, we don't run out of beer, so it's X-ray. Oh my bad. Okay, so <laughs> like, subscribe, all that bullshit. Yep. If you don't, fuck you. Talk shit in the comments. <laughs>